From Corolla One Studios in Glendale, California, this is The Adam Corolla Show. Adam's guest today, comedian Orny Adams, plus a visit from Dr. Drew. We'll do some news stories with Chris Loxamana and a spirited round of blah, blah, blah. And now, a man whose spank bank never has insufficient funds. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. A choice for the gun. Amanda, did you get it on? Thanks for tuning in and thanks for sharing. That's how we grow the show. Orny Adams is in studio. Good to see you, my friend. Chris Max Pat is here. Uh, hey Dr. going to join us Yes. soon enough. Um, stuff to get into. I got a lot of stuff on my list. Um, first, it's raining. It's freezing out here. Very uncharacteristic uh, weather. We got our SoCal. first blizzard warning. Yeah, I went on a hike. Uh, not a hike. I just went for a walk around my neighborhood when it finally stopped yesterday. And snow all in the mountains. I mean, nearby mountains. Never did, Don't see that often. Did you get hail last week? I got hail or sleet, whatever the difference is. No, but I, or maybe, but I, I didn't catch it. But I will say that. The weather kind of brings us to a subject, and the subject for me is is all encompassing, which is I wanted to go. F- I had been cooped up the entire Saturday, could not leave the house. It was raining that hard all day, and at some point, I was going a little stir crazy, and I thought I got to get some exercise. I'm just going to get an umbrella and I'm going to go for a walk. And I searched my entire house. And there were zero umbrellas inside wow. of my house. And then I thought to myself, I almost never have an umbrella or access an umbrella. <laughs> it's a nine dollar item. Right. My house is festooned, <laughs> littered with high dollar junk that nobody ever uses or touches. But a fucking nine dollar umbrella, I do not possess. I'm thinking this is new merch. To sell yes. after the shows. Yes. <laughs> the Corolla umbrella with a tracker <laughs> so you know where it is. Yes. In the house. What closet? Is it in the car? You know. It, it is pathetic. And then I just went back onto my sofa, got back in my bathrobe, and just thought, you're such a pathetic sack of shit. So wait a minute. The don't lack of have um- an umbrella. So the lack of umbrella canceled the walk? It was raining. <laughs> I, I was like, I'm. I started thinking about putting a bag on my head. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, like you see New Yorkers do in the '70s right. or something. But I just thought, now it's raining and I cannot walk without my umbrella. What's fascinating about New York City is the minute rain starts, all these umbrella salesmen come out of nowhere. They're on every corner. Yes, there's no now. LA hasn't figured this out yet. No, there should. We got the guys selling flowers outside of the. You know, uh, the the funeral, uh, the, the ce- 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 what, do, what do they bury people? Cemeteries? <laughs> yes, those places. I have long yes. COVID, I think. <laughs> I, can't, I can't recall anything anymore. No, there is, when you get off of the freeway by Forest Lawn now, it is turned into a Turkish bazaar of floor <laughs> street. I mean, it used to be one or two guys yeah. camped out there. Yeah. Now the guy's got his old lady, he's got his yeah. kid, there's 15 different merchants there selling. I always kind of think to myself, there's there's got to be a, a hierarchy, like a pecking order. Well, like, like when I work construction, mm. there would be the roach coach would come by the industrial lot I was working on with you know all the different little cabinet shops and warehouses and stuff. And this is back when eating off a lunch truck was eating off a lunch truck. It yeah. wasn't cool and glamorized. But Inexpensive. Yeah, the guy would show up and you know if some other lunch truck pulled up before him or something that was a turf war wow this was this guy's beat they they'd have to that that would not be smiled upon yeah. you undercutting someone by pulling up your lunch truck 10 minutes before the other guy's lunch truck and i don't know how the flowers work but i always look at them and i think would i want to be closest to the off ramp of right. the freeway or would I be the guy down on the end who set himself, you know, last chance yeah. type flower? That's what under- I wanted to ask you. Are you are you buying from the first place, or do you wait and see? Now, what happens? You can't. You're not circling back. No. If the first place is flowers, 
Right. The other thing is, I don't like when they're aggressive, when they're sort of in the street. Right. I go, that's desperate. Those flowers are near dead. But but to your point, um, many of them have umbrellas to shade themselves Mm. from the sun. Yes. But next time I pull over, I'm going to go save the flowers, but I will... (laughs) Take Jose, the, um, I'll give you a twenty-five bucks. The guy's for that name umbrella. is Jose. I'd imagine. But at first, it was a Turkish bazaar, and now the name's Jose. <laughs> I would say statistically, there has to be at least eleven guys named Jose, and probably three Annas. Yeah, in that in that mix, as best as I can tell. Okay, I, I profile. You profile. Well, we could send somebody down there and find out what their find names out. are. Take a yeah, survey. Yeah, right. Yeah, but that's like. Like I said, or you you could walk into any bar in Alaska and yell federal marshals and just watch everyone scatter. That's it, huh? I think if you walk down there with a clipboard and you start asking people's names, (laughs) you're going to get shanked. (laughs) (laughs) They'll bury you uh, by the freeway. I went to the farmer's market yesterday. Yeah. Where? Which one? I don't don't, want to say, and I'll tell you why. Mm. There was a band playing. Mm-hmm. So you buy food, and then there's a place to eat it, like a outdoor food court with entertainment. Right. They were so bad. They were so out of key, mm. and they were ruining great songs. <laughs> oh. And I've come to realize that certain songs should never be covered. Mm. Okay, like John Lennon Imagine. Oh, they did that one? No, but they, they did a Simon and Gonfargo, and then they, they went into Whiter Shade of Pale. Oh, Procol Harum. Yeah, should not be covered. Oh, ever. Well, if you can pull it off. Nobody can pull it off. Well, that's that's a decent point. Nobody can pull off. Uh, I'm, I've come up with a list. Okay. John <laughs> Lennon, mm-hmm. uh, imagine, Procol Harum, uh, Whiter Shade of Pale, mm-hmm. Whitney Houston, uh, I, uh, the Bodyguard song. I will always love you. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm too sexy and I know it. Oh, right, right said Fred. Fred. Never should be covered. Right. These, these guys nailed I, it vocally. I don't even know if it should have come out in the first place. Like maybe Right <laughs> said Fred should have never done it. Like if I had a time machine. Leonard Cohen, mm. Hallelujah. Too many oh, people doing that. Everybody yeah. covers that. Yeah. Do you have any on your list that... I, uh, well, I'm trying to think. Well, my, the argument is, is if I think if you can pull it off, I'll, I'll be a willing participant. I'll, I'll give an example of pulling it off. All right. Nobody should have covered uh, Ray Charles, Georgia on my mind, mm-hmm. but Willie Nelson mm-hmm. nailed it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he gave a different take on it, but it was, it was worth it. Yeah. I and, agree. And well, then, what songs did they play? Oh, they did a couple of Simon and Garfunkel's. They they tried the uh, whiter shade of pale. It was all songs like that, but they were out of. It was a man and a woman out of key. Mm, probably uh, a couple. I I bet they're I together. Think, yeah, yeah. I think they oh, were wait a minute. matching. Jose and Guy are girl together. band, aren't they called the Out of Keys? The, <laughs> <laughs> matching uh, sweat tie dye sweatpants. Oh no! You would go nuts at the farm. Well, There's no way you could go to a farmer's market because everybody is. Dr- it's a costume party, right? Half of the people there look like uh, like a Wes Anderson movie. Look yeah, like a casting for the, Steve Zissou. The the reason <laughs> with the, the Life Aquatic. There was a whole family that looked like Life Aquatic with this little kid with the hat. They all had the hats. My problem with the farmer's market is. I feel compelled to feign some sort of interest yeah. as I go by the stand. And so then a conversation and uh-huh. leads to, so you grew these persimmons yourself? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. And then they, I always, I like the routine, you know, yeah, you yeah. get up at 4.30 in the morning, you uh-huh. harvest the persimmons, you load them up in the back of the Subaru, yeah. you set up here at 6.15, people start wandering in at 7, whatever. So they have that conversation. The thing about farmer's markets is there's usually, it's like the Roach Hotel. There's like one way in, but you can't escape out the back. So mm-hmm. They bottleneck at the end. Uh, yeah. They, they cul-de-sac at the yeah, end. Yeah. So then I say to the persimmon lesbian, wow. <laughs> She's a lesbian? Yes. This is awesome. <laughs> What's her name? Uh, Anna. Anna. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I say to her... I'm really into your persimmons, but you know, I, I gotta I gotta walk the row here. I don't want to drag right. a sack of persimmons, but but on the way out. Yeah. We'll revisit. But we're, you we're don't gonna go revisit. Back. Yeah, but now I can't get out. 
Right. Because I get to the end and there's no getting out. My car's on the other side. You really are going to pass her by. I got to do like a shoulder roll past that Emma and the persimmon stand. And it's also much. Anna, sorry. Anna, it's also much like the cemetery with the flowers. Do you buy from the first stand? Mm. Or do you wait until late? And also, there are places, there are people that go to the same farmer's market every week, and they line up for the same. You end up buying (laughs) shit you never meet. I I bought prunes yesterday. Right. I'm a young man. (laughs) I got caught up in the prune. Like, there was mayhem. You get caught in the story. They're they're like, I heard somebody say, he's got the the Persian lejeunes this week. Right. What do you mean, the Persian? Yeah, the guy's got the Persian. I heard them. So I followed them. And the guy's giving out samples. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't had prunes since I stole them from my grandfather right. 30 years ago. Yes. So I don't know how you're supposed to buy them. He puts them, he's got a bag. He puts them in like a little baggie, and mm-hmm. it's a ridiculous amount of money. But today, when I was unloading, I had totally forgot I bought prunes. Mm-hmm. I bought honey, local honey. Locally sourced. Yeah. You think this is Jim's local honey? You think I need this? No. You think I need any of this stuff? I got more baked goods. Yeah. I got pumpernickel bread, which is embarrassing. Yeah. I got a scone that tastes more like a muffin. Oh, yeah, muffin scone. I got, yeah, I got muffin scone. I got uh, kumquats oh. that you have to eat with the skin on. Yeah, there's kumquats. <laughs> there's kumquats and loquats. Yeah, I, I, got, I don't even know what a loquat is. I'm such an easy say. I just, I got the bag. And then yeah. here's the other thing. There are some people, this is really annoying. They've got a full cart. They've mm-hmm. got a full cart that you pull as if they're yeah. doing that much shopping. Right. So I mocked all of them. Yes. I go, I expect that to be full by the end. <laughs> right. You know, that's and funny. then you had to sit down and listen to an out-of-tune Simon and Garfunkel. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad. But you're buying so much stuff, you wish you had that cart. I mean, we probably got around like that guy with the prunes. He'll buy yeah. anything. I, I Also, we are... In, in dates. In, dates. I bought dates, too. We are inventing excuses to eat mm. more than ever in history mm. it used to be pretty well sorted out yeah lunch you know breakfast lunch right. and dinner now yeah. there's a lot of in-between eating going on because the food truck the gourmet food taco truck is pulled up in front of work like mm-hmm. you already ate lunch but you're going to go out and have a taco because you want to get in on the experience right of and it's the same it's the same with the farmer's market you yeah. don't you don't we don't need to n- to eat nonstop. We're fat enough. Right. And and all this stuff, your your dates, for instance, is supposed to fall under the heading of, you know, healthy, nutritious, natural. That's just tons of sugar. It's sugar. It's tons of sugar. Right. All this stuff. And right? all the natural honey from the uh, organic beehive and all that. Kind of, it's just liquid sugar. That's right. all. Yeah. Yeah. There's nothing healthy about the farmer's market, but the people, the way they dress. Yeah. It's pretty remarkable in the conversations I was listening to. Yeah, well, the uh, the sort of straight white version of that is the like Pomona swap meet flea market mm. for the car car parts guys. And these guys, you ever been? You've never been to that one. No, no, no. But I mean, it sounds like I would go. Same deal. Load up the truck at four thirty in the morning. Lay all these Edelbrock intake manifolds out. Heads, you know, the heaviest stuff you yeah. can find. Heads from a three fifty one Cleveland and stuff. They lay it all out. Everyone just walks past it. Nobody <laughs> buys it. And after eleven hours of sitting in the sun, you then load have to just in. load it back up yeah. and leave. I don't know what these guys' wives are up to. I I don't, I don't know what's in it for them. How much money you could the persimmon guy make on a Sunday? Well, now he's there? a guy. It was uh, before it was oh. Anna. Yeah, I say guy. <laughs> you know, I said Subaru. There's some flexibility here in I, terms of sexuality. I find the process of even buying the persimmons difficult. Like they, I think just growing it and farming it is enough work, and then they have to cut it, transport it. Talk to people like us. If, if, right. if, it's it's it not does, a good life. It doesn't I, make sense to me either. If I did honey, for instance, yeah. and I, you know, kept the bees and yeah. then went and got in the garb and then smoked them, you right. know, make some docile. Yeah. You know, um, it's weird. Smoke makes bees docile, but smoke makes 
humans agitated. Like yeah, if yeah. anyone's blowing cigar smoke in somebody's yeah, face, yeah, yeah. they're like, oh, get out. <laughs> yeah. I hate a fake cough. Anyway, you got to get the bees. You got to build the hive. You got to get the queen. Yeah. I've done a little of this. Sounds like you've done a lot of this. I did one. I did a, I did a half day of it. Is this like a bad date? It sounds like something they do on a reality show. No, I was uh, dating activity. I was working in the cabinet shop where the lunch truck would would show up. <laughs> yeah, Tom Johnson's shop in Chatsworth. Oh yeah, Tom Johnson. Yeah, and he got How a call. He, he got a call from his dad that said the queen had like taken off from his hive from her hive, and that the bees have swarmed. Uh huh. And so we had to go to the dad's house. And, and do what? Um had to climb up a ladder because because the queen had landed on a branch i had to take a burlap sack and put them around all the bees uh and i think oh. cut the branch down because when the when the queen leaves they all just create a a, a pyramid huh. of, of, of a bee like you ever see those guys with the beards made of bees yeah, that, that's how that's yeah. how they do it they put like the pheromone on their chin or whatever and then next thing you know there's it's, it's a pile of bees hanging off the side of a tree. There's no hive. Mm. And you got to get up there with a sack and then uh, get the bees and then take them over to your plywood beehive and dump them in there Come and tell in. them to make a hive there. And then the next- Then you get the honey. Honey. Then you jar it. Right. You, you strain it or whatever. Right. And you put it in a jar, you label it, and then you charge- Four dollars. Yeah. I would want twenty six hundred dollars yeah. for this jar yeah. if that's what I had to go through. I agree. And you're risking your life. I you're- got chased by one bee, uh-huh. like like uh-huh. uh, like a Yogi Bear cartoon, where it turned into an arrow, and 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 I was just running as fast as I could, and this one bee just kept coming at me, just bang, 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 and Tom and his dad were just like laughing their ass off as I was just running through this field, my arms flailing over my head. Now, it's are horrible. Are you supposed to run from a bee? Should you stop and confront? Maybe you, you're supposed to take a stance of power. You just, you yeah, know. like uh, that's a bear. That's yeah. a bear. Right. Okay, but, yeah, okay, that's okay, not a bee. How, how about like alligators and crocodiles? In the movies growing up, you ran serpentine. Remember that? Mm-hmm. Is that true? Are you supposed to zigzag? I don't. I don't think that any show of aggression works on reptiles. Mm. Reptiles are pretty much like, well, sort of like uh, Barbara Ferrer, who who <laughs> ran L.A. City into the ground over COVID stuff. Like when you pipe up and go, this is bullshit. I'm mm. not shutting down my outdoor dining. Boom. You get it. You you will be attacked by reptiles. If you try to make yourself big to an alligator, the alligator's just going to eat you. The bear okay. probably has a little more sense, you oh. know, can be, can be negotiated with. There's been some bad uh, alligator or, or crocodile attack, that, that elderly woman yep. in Florida. Did you see that video? No. She was like 80-something years old, and the crocodile was coming out of the water to get the, the uh, dog, and then she tried to defend the dog, and she's... Uh, the, Dragged her right into the water. The crocodile. Really? Yeah. Or alligator. Alligator or crocodile? I don't know. I don't know. The, I, One's I, bigger. Probably an alligator. Didn't see that. I read an article where a guy, you know those uh, these losers that play frisbee, um, ultimate frisbee, like a game, like it's a sport. Like a, Yeah, oh. it's like football. Well, ultimate frisbee. frisbee, and now they have frisbee golf. Yeah, right. So this golf. is, there's Ugh. a frisbee golf course yes. next to a pond in Florida. Mm-hmm. And frisbees would go into the pond, right? And the players would say, ah, "Game over, right?" <laughs> or get another frisbee, right? Yeah, that frisbee's gone, gone. But there was this local guy who would go into the lake and retrieve them, and there were alligators <laughs> in there. Yeah, and he would go at nighttime because it was illegal, and he didn't want the the losers that ran the the, the park mm-hmm. to stop him. Mm-hmm. Well, guess what happened to him? Nothing. He's happily married. Yeah, sells for and looking the forward to market. a raise. Yeah. They found him. Oh, dead. Ah, missing three limbs. Wow. And here's the final line of the article. Mm. The coroner still has not determined <laughs> cause of death. Yeah. Guy lost three limbs. Yeah. I mean, I'm gonna could be complications from the vaccine. <laughs> could that's what I was thinking. 
Yeah. M- maybe, uh, you know, long COVID. Yeah. It could uh, be. I was on a no QAnon sure. website the other day. Yeah. And they said that guy <laughs> was yeah. taken down by complications it's from defi- the jab. Definitely. In fact, he probably had just, I think the alligator probably gave him the shot, the vaccine. Oh, uh, yeah. It's yeah. just, just a thud. All right. Somebody's on line one from Wisconsin. Daniel? How's it going, Adam? Hi, guy. Uh, long time listener. It's crazy <clears throat> to be on the phone with you. I I was uh, listening to your podcast back in South Korea when I was the first one with an iPhone, and I had to go to McDonald's to uh, get a little Wi-Fi and download your cast. It was you guys and uh, This American Life. That was it. Wow. Uh, but it's pretty cool to be talking to you finally. Nice. And so you're in the service or just hanging out in South Korea? You know, that's always the first question, but really it's it's either service or a teacher. And I was there to teach. Oh. Um, I, I did uh, 15 years uh, teaching at universities in, in Korea. It was excellent, excellent life. And two years ago with COVID, my family decided to move back home. And this is kind of where my predicament uh, starts. I want to get your opinion on it. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm living in small town, Wisconsin, middle of nowhere. And I'm teaching in uh, high school, teaching English. The high school is actually a barn. And uh, <clears throat> the kids are mainly farmers. They're going to go work in factories. Their families all work in factories. And I'm from Chicago, lived in Korea. This is totally new for me, but I kind of liked the idea of just seeing a small town school and all this and mm-hmm. trying it out. And it's going well. I've been there two years, and, and they like me there. But it's, it's, uh, it's good in one sense because from administration, it's completely hands-off, so I have I have total autonomy to teach the novels I want to teach. I don't have to worry about pronouns. I don't have to follow a lot of rigmarole that, you know, teachers tend to do in, in more uh, urban environments. Yeah. That, However, like we're on the, yeah, like on the teachers other, who on the work other hand, in actual um, buildings. There's so much lack of, go oh, sorry, sorry. Go yeah. Ahead. There's so much lack of what? Of ambition from the students, because like I say, a lot of them, uh, just plan on graduating, going to work at the factory. There's like less than 20% that look into going to college at all. So I have a far- hard time feeling inspired about, you know, pushing kids to really. Uh, Sounds like their, you like you know, Korea better, better than America. Yeah. Sounds like you hate America. <laughs> Sounds like yeah. you're not a patriot. This is the heartland, buddy. Yeah. This yeah. is Wisconsin. Are you calling to just th- give away your citizenship? I don't know. This is quite a long you know, diatribe. It, 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 flag burning it's funny in the you say that because uh, I, left, I left the country to go to Korea feeling much very much that way, but 15 years over there, I came back a uh, big-time patriot. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a proud red, white, and blue guy now. Mm, mm. How many times did you rehearse telling us this story? Because I could have edited out about five lines. <laughs> well, well, I guess, uh, you know, it's been my first time on the radio, so yeah. I, I need a little work at it, I suppose. Okay. Orny's a wordsmith, too. Yeah. <laughs> You yeah. know, that's his oh, job. He? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Didn't doing. you hear that scintillating story about buying honey? <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I told my wife, I said, they've been on honey and persimmons for about 20 minutes here. It's amazing. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Daniel, the, the question is, is how do you motivate these kids or what's the question? No, the question is more, um, what would you value more at a job? Autonomy, freedom from admin to kind of do what you like to do. Uh, but on the other hand, not getting the most <clears throat> inspirational uh, feeling from doing your, your job. I would say that if you would ask me that several years ago, as it pertains to being a teacher, uh, I would have gone the more inspirational route. But in this uh-huh. day and age of vax mandates and pronoun mm-hmm. mandates, and we got mm-hmm. to teach critical race theory and the 1619 project and all the bullshit <laughs> that's trying to force up our asses, I would say you've dodged a bullet being in Wisconsin at that in that farmhouse and not having to deal with <laughs> seminars on critical race and seminars on diversity and seminars on sexual, you know, like the you. You teach in Chicago, you have to argue with people all day of why it's a bad idea for the young man who identifies as a woman to use the ladies' locker room. You've dodged all of the woke nonsense that everyone has to deal with now. H- has he? Yeah. I, he said I have. He I have. Um, it's, it's remarkable to me, to be honest, um, how, how distance I am from that world, because I hear that from teachers on your show, and you know, I read the articles, and I know that that's a big part of education. But it is not at all where I'm at. What do you teach? When I teach a lesson, I'll usually have to preface and say, guys, 
I want to get through this without a racist comment or two oh, because uh, I believe in you guys. So let's try to handle a world issue and let's not say anything racist. And sometimes we, we do that. Sometimes we pull it off. How do they feel about the Jews out there in Wisconsin? Like they do with most everything. They believe it exists, but, you know, they've never seen it. So they don't really feel too, you know, confident talking about it. And that's where the interesting part of it comes into it comes into play. I know a lot of people from those rural places, like I've never even seen a Jew. Yeah. And I've seen tons yeah. of Jews, and I'm here to report they're not missing anything. Yeah. I mean, aesthetically, <laughs> they're just okay. There were no you know what I mean? <laughs> Well, that keep the Jews out of Wisconsin campaign. <laughs> yeah. Is real, but yeah. it's working. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, in Korea, it was uh, 99 point, I don't know, something percent uh, Korean there. So there was no diversity. I was that diversity, and I would get stared at wherever I went. Oh. Um, and now I'm in Wisconsin. It's very much the same thing, except, you know, I, I'm the majority now. I always ask this question. Everyone always takes great offense to it. And then I explain it. Mm. And then they go, oh, yeah. So whenever someone is from some other society, I always go, I'm from L.A. So I go, who are your Mexicans? And they go, what? Uh. And I go, here, (laughs) the people that do all the lawn mowing and the flower Mm -hmm. selling and all the work there is to do, all the construction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Everything there is to do in L.A. is performed by Mexicans. Mm. And then once I explain that to people, they will say, like in Germany, they'll go, oh, it's the Bulgarians. Oh. They come here. Yeah, they'll, yeah. they'll do the masonry yeah. work here or whatever. But in yeah. Korea, when everyone's yeah. Korean, then who gets to be the Mexicans? So uh, it's, it's, it, you couldn't be more right on, on, <laughs> that, on that, actually. There was, uh, it was Southeast Asians over there, anyone, Cambodia, Philippines, Thailand. They would be the ones working in the fields, factory jobs. And what was kind of remarkable is Koreans were oftentimes just boldly racist. <laughs> they would just say, you oh, know, yeah. I don't like them. They're dirty. They're dirty. Hmm. And, you know, growing up in the States, we're so desens- desensitized to that kind of talk. Oh, no, sorry. We're so sensitive to that kind of talk. And I'd hear that, that and like, guys, you just can't say that. But, uh, yeah, they, they didn't have much diversity, and they didn't have the kind of thing in the back of their mind telling them this is not okay to say these kind of things. So you'd hear just blatant, I don't like those people because they're dark-skinned and dirty so you've, um, because you've they just, work outside. You've just taught in racist communities. Have That's you ever right. taught in a, <laughs> in a, in a, a tolerant <laughs> place? Of you, And what subject do you teach? English. Is, well, I, no. I teach English, but I oh. like to I like to think that I, I have it. such oh, an good. open classroom that I get good dialogue, strong nope. dialogue with the students, and that's where it comes mm-hmm. from. All right, so if you were in South Korea and it was six in the morning and you heard a leaf blower outside oh. and you looked out your window, there'd be a Cambodian guy holding it. Yeah, that's that's exactly right. Um, they, they they come over from Southeast Asia, and it's you know it's funny you say the Mexican thing because it works the same way too. It's very tropical, uh, warm places that the Koreans would go to vacation, but they didn't like them coming into their country to work the the you know cheap paying jobs that they didn't um, want to do. It's it's, it, it, yes. it's totally perfect parallel to. No, I I I would like to figure out. I would like to do a global map. Like mm-hmm. I said, if you meet someone from Finland. And you just go, who does uh-huh. all the work? They go, the Hungarians huh. or something. It's always another <laughs> poor group that has come over a border and is willing and, uh, to do shit later. that other people don't yeah. want to do. I'd like to do a world map called, yeah. who are your Mexicans? Right. right. And it would title. just no, be... <laughs> it's a great point. I, I was lucky to travel a lot in my time there. And you go to India, yeah, the Sri Lankans would be the Mexicans. And then when you're in Southeast Asia, Thailand's a little better off, and they would look down like the Mian, the Burmese would be their Mexicans. So yeah, it you, feels you like you've got, got a, a co-writer. It, it, it feels <laughs> like this guy could co-author this book with you, Adam. Yes. I don't know why you're not partnering it's, with uh, Daniel, Daniel yeah. here. It sounds racist, but it's really saying who does the real work. Well, in, in Los Angeles, no white people. You don't see black people. You don't see Asians doing the real work. Yes, but it's the way mm-hmm. you pose the question that I think people may have a problem with. 
oh, if you okay. want me as oh, a publisher. Okay, I got Let it. me be the uh, publisher. Right. Give us some notes. What are your Mexicans? And, no, no, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> first of all, how are your I Mexicans? Think, uh, yeah, I'm surprised you didn't pitch. Who's your Jose? <laughs> but oh, that's that sounds good. That yeah. rolls off the tongue. Actually, no, no, I, I'm I'm good at it, but I, I don't want to contribute <laughs> to this racist okay. line all right. of thought. Subtitle. All right. Who are your Mexicans? <laughs> Subtitle. Who is your Jose? But is that what you're saying? I, I think you could do. Who are your laborers? Who I know it's not as like, you know, it does. It lacks the, the yeah. Punch that's, like, that's not going to fly off the shelf. I'm just saying. I'm thinking of the places that you can actually promote this. Seem limited. Who are your Mexicans? Gonna, uh, what, uh, everyone on Fox. I could do Tucker. Yeah. I could do Hannity. Uh, well, I could we, do Ingram. Tucker like, would steal this shows. from you. Yeah. We want you to have more mass appeal. We want you to be able to at least go something. Uh, Away from like Fox, a little bit away, mm. and I don't know what that would be because we are very polarized. I think right what now. are your Mexicans would open that up a little. Maybe I could go on MSNBC, <laughs> like a Joy Reid or someone like that. Is that what you're do saying? you think the View would have you on for what are your Mexicans? Yeah, for sure, you do. Oh yeah, it's not, it's you, not think, what? you don't think Whoopi's gonna? Is she still there? What She's about, not even Mexican. What about Joy Behar? She's mm. not gonna allow this. They're gonna oh. protest. Oh, They're gonna walk right. off the show. Yeah, which which will sell books. Yeah. I want to move units versus who are your laborers. I think if you did the title in Spanish, mm. who speaks Spanish here? Mm. We have a son to his Mexicanos. There oh, you go. Man. Well, that, he's still saying Mexicans. I don't. That's the part we're, we're having trouble with. Yeah, we think maybe we could soften it. To those are your Mexicans. No, that the first word isn't isn't the issue, Adam. Yeah. It's the it's Orny the has one. a problem <laughs> with it. That's what he's saying. No, I'm saying I don't judge. I'm just saying I could see how there could be blowback from the publishing community and from people, and perhaps even the Mexican and Mexican American community. Yes, mm. uh, by. You know, they're not going to buy any of these to, books. We need to soften it up a bit. That's all. What What do you propose? Now are your Mexicans? No, that's not. Stop changing <laughs> I, I've the first given you guys word. five good options. <laughs> you you got to pick one of them. All right, Daniel. Doctor Drew's here. Oh, hi, Drew. How you doing? Well, he's in the other room, <laughs> but he's going to want to come in. So I'm going to I'm going to oh, cut okay, you well, loose, Daniel. What I'm saying is, give up on your dreams <laughs> and just <laughs> die in Wisconsin. In a, in a place where the administration is not up your ass. How do you think the insulation what, is in that? Far? Are I, we still here? You answered my question when you asked me, uh, when you said, are you okay with this question of uh, who are your Mexicans? And the fact that I was totally okay about it, I think makes me realize I should stay in the woke-free, pronoun-free, small-town Wisconsin. It sounds like you would use this as a teaching manual in one of your classes. <laughs> I could. I yeah. certainly could. Orny wants to know, as far as insulation in the, in the school barn, are we talking rigid ins insulation? Mm -hmm. we talking R13, R16? we talking about blown insulation, expanding foam? Are we talking about blown cellulose? Artie's, uh, I want to know. I'm wondering that. Orny's yeah. obsessed. I have, a, I have a million questions. I want to know, is there a school uniform? Is it a camo? <laughs> is it open carry in the classroom? Mm. I want to know how often do you suspect your students shower? I've got like a lot of questions. Do you do you, do they bring a live kill? Like if they kill a deer over the weekend, do they bring it in? Mm. Is there a slide? I have so many rural questions. Do people drive tractors? Is there a tractor parking lot? In oh, this school. Yeah. I've got a lot. Do they teach ammunition reload? Is that a class? Do you do driver's training on a ride-along lawnmower? Yes. <laughs> mm. Yes. These are all uh, valid well, questions. Is this a uh, co-ed school? Uh, is jeans and cowboy boots. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Four-wheelers. A lot of people riding four-wheelers four -wheelers to school. Uh, tractors. Haven't seen one yet, but we have cows painted all over our uh, basketball gymnasium. Is that your mascot? Uh, no, our mascot is a falcon, strangely enough. Um, mm -hmm. I drive past Amish on horse and buggies on the way into, into work every day. Mm. Um, beyond that, I How think you pretty much school? nailed it, though. You got the vibe. How big is the school? How many it's, students? It's K through 12, and we have about, like, uh, maybe 150 students total. Oh, and man. what, how often does a student have to drop out because she becomes pregnant? Oh, we've had one or two of those. Um, yeah. It's more so got to go, you know, work on the farm. So these kids are up at 3 a.m. and then coming to school. That's that's the well, hard Daniel, part. Daniel, piece of advice. you got to learn to pull out. 
if you're going to keep <laughs> yeah, getting these gals s- pregnant. Number one. <laughs> number two, I've seen a million pictures of Amish and their buggies, and I've only seen one reflector. That weird triangle yeah, reflector. It's, 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 Is that uh, Amish law? Yeah. Are they allowed to just use reflective tape or the button kind the or round. the stick on the round ones that we grew up with? Mm-hmm. Why is it yeah. only the why triangle? Why have they not evolved? Yeah, why have the, the Amish not evolved when it comes to reflecting light? I'm not. I'm not an expert on the Amish. These are brilliant questions. I will say, very. I, uh, excuse very, me, Daniel. Uh, I thought my questions were brilliant. <laughs> people, they wave every time you drive past them, which which really you know surprised me because you're on a highway going 60, passing by them, and they're waving at you every time. It's I'm amazing. gonna go. I'm gonna go talk to an Amish guy and go, "Who are your Mexicans?" And they're gonna go, "The Quakers." <laughs> You do they bring do up, all the work. You do bring up an interesting question about the reflector not being one shape. Yes. Hmm. Could be part of the religion. It's only the triangle. That's Can we it. find any picture of a, a, yes. a buggy it, with a... It exists, but it's universally accepted that it's the triangle, yeah. which didn't exist in our youth. It's a new, new configuration. Yeah. All right, Dr. Drew is uh, out there. We're going to bring him in. I think we'll play some blah, blah, blog with him right after this. Well, when you're young, spring break is all about what you take off. But as an adult, make it about what you put on. Lounge anywhere from poolside to inside with new Tommy John. Oh, this stuff is so good. The loungewear is so comfortable. They're underwear. So I'm wearing them right now. We'll not leave the house without it. Tommy John loungewear, pajamas, and underwear have dozens of comfort innovations like luxurious soft tri-blend and micromodal fabrics. With four-way stretch, Tommy John's been covering our butts for 15 years plus. With over 20 million pairs sold and thousands of five-star reviews. Again, I just wear my Tommy John's. I will not. I, I traveled and somebody else packed my bag and they didn't pack Tommy John and I was gone for two days. I was uncomfortable. Best pair you'll ever wear. Or it's free, guarantee, right, Dawson? Shop Tommy John's colorful new spring designs at TommyJohn.com slash Adam and get 20% off your first order. Save 20% right now at TommyJohn.com slash Adam. See site for details. In the spirit of Murrow, Jennings, Cronkite, here's another great moment in local news. Newlyweds Ben Affleck and Jennifer Lopez have inked their love for Valentine's Day. JLo showed off her and Ben's new tattoos on Instagram. She got an infinity sign on her rib cage with their names, Jennifer and Ben. He opted for two arrows crisscrossed with the letters J and B. That's a great moment in local news. Now, back to the Adam Carolla Show. So he got a BJ on us? Tattooed. I, Drew, where do you come down? Good to see you, Drew. <laughs> I, BJ. Where do you come down on the celebrity tats? Uh, I, I have no. I don't want to know about them. Yes. I have no problem that they have them. I certainly don't want the romantic cross tattooing. I don't want to know anything about that on anybody. And now J Lo can't be buried in a Jewish cemetery. I came in to be your Mexican and your Jew today. That's mm. right. That was my plan. Or we're lousy with Jews. <laughs> I, I knew that. <laughs> and, uh, the, and I saw some of the discomfort around your Mexican, so I thought I'd try to settle all that. Yeah, or, or and he's like three and a half Jews, so we're, <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, we got a ton of Jews in here. Uh, Drew and I were doing Megan Kelly's uh, show this morning, which is uh, always a Always a hoot. I, I forgot my firecracker. Susan goes, did you tell Megan Adam has a crush on her? Or she thinks, no, you think she has a crush on you. And I thought, damn it, I should have said that. Uh, it's been a theory of mine. Uh, next time. You've next asked time. her, right? Or you said, you've asked her, like, in, a, in another world, maybe we could have been together. Somebody, I maybe Garagos <laughs> brought that up to her. But uh, it was funny because she kept swearing. Yes. And then she kept saying she was giving it up for Lent. Yes, that her mother begged her, her to give it up. her mother begged her to stop swearing, but she would just yell fuck every <laughs> once in a while. Well, you know what's funny? She dropped a shit several times. And yes. I thought, I guess shit's off the list or something. And then she admitted F was the one. F We've gotten really lenient when yeah. she... Shit. Yeah. Shit's my favorite word. Yeah, Love it's that. good. Yeah. Bullshit. Yeah. yeah. I hit it hard. I like jack shit. Jack shit. Yeah. I don't use that. You know what? I'm going to give you that one. I remember <laughs> the first... I actually remember the first time I heard a friend call a friend a dipshit. 
Oh, that's I was like, too. whoa, that's, a good, that's a good word. I was like, fifth grade, they dipshit. Like, <laughs> I want that. Does and that then shit can is something that needs to be is more good too. I, I think shit can is CH, though, isn't it? Uh, I think it's a military term. Huh. Shit can. Oh, I didn't know that. Wow. I thought it was shit. I, I, yeah. There is a Jew in the house. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. There's racism all around us. <laughs> we got to look that one up. I never I never knew that. How I haven't about, said it wrong. Hold on a second. Mm-hmm. A sequel. I see for your book would be Who's Your Jew? Mm. Ooh. Mm. Yeah, I like that. No yeah. one will care, though. <laughs> yeah. You know, we just get shit on. You know what I mean? They'll start Are shitting on I him. didn't even know you were Jew. Uh, wow. King Mazel Tov. Not, not is... we- ish. I'm one of those guys. No, Jew-ish. but I think. Where, <laughs> where'd you grow up? Pasadena, the Jewish enclave. And bar mitzvah and everything? No, I think I'm right. But oh, I, went to, I went to Saturday school all the way through like fourth grade. And your mother's Jewish? No, dad. Okay, you're not okay. Extended I'm, I'm family. Not bad enough. No, I know. Extended. <laughs> she converted. Uh, she converted. He's disgusting. Yeah, you, you, it is, I am disgusting. I'm not <laughs> really with him. But, the only but, Jewish thing about you is you're a doctor. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, my extended family was definitely Jewish. They were all Ukrainian and Belarusian immigrants from the whole of Domar. Yeah. yeah but, so. uh, but it's interesting because I, you know, I've known your work for years, but mm. I never saw you as Jewish. I know. It's, um, and so, yeah. The, the shit's a mom. Yeah. So. yeah we're not, uh, we're not, we're, we're not, not talking you're not He's into saving money though. Yeah. Well, the, that's anti-Semitic right there. That's an anti-Semitic <laughs> That is actually, a, that's an attack actually. Sorry, yeah. sorry guys. That's well, just. You, but you may be on to who are your Jews book. <laughs> yeah. You're maybe on to something because. But, it, and we can get you on NPR with this one. At oh. the top of the food chain. You know, the dentists, mm. the lawyers, the accounts, you know, traditionally mm. uh, Jewish professions out here. Yeah. Um, so w- if you go to Korea, I think that I think they'll just say our Jews are the smart Koreans. Or no, there could be like, you know, the gangmen, like, the, you know, there's a, a, a group of people within Korea that are higher uh, like tiered, I, yeah, I think that's what because it's pretty racially pure there, right? Don't are you allowed to be there as a? I don't, mm-hmm. Somehow mm-hmm. Daniel from the farm got in there. <laughs> can't be that hard. You can visit. You can't you can, really stay. Yeah, though. but once you're there, you could do uh, things. Fair enough. All right, know, fair enough. Procreate. So let's let's do a little hypothetical, just in terms of wiring. I wanted to get shit can originally military term for literal can you use as a latrine. How they spell oh, so, it. Shit. Must be shit then, yeah. Mm-hmm. It wasn't yeah. on the CH. It's you're th- not CH? You're thinking of that place Eugene Levy lives. <laughs> um, is that shit's shit Creek? Creek. Yeah. That's a different spelling. All right, so let me say yeah. this. Uh, Dr. Drew, of course, did the challenge. So it's not in front special of me, forces. but Special Forces. Mm. And I was watching some of that. Mm. And I was thinking of the stuff I'd be okay with and the thing I wouldn't be okay with. In terms of the torture they give you or the... Yeah. Yeah. And like your wiring, Mm -hmm. you know, how one is wired. And I realized uh, as I was watching everyone do the Jeep dunk where they took the Range Rover and plunged them into the sea and so many people tapped out just sort of immediately. The challenge was we put you behind the wheel of this Jeep. Strap you in a bunch of times. Strap you in. We have a instructor behind you probably with scuba gear or something and he's going to be behind you and then once you go under you have to be there for like 15 seconds there's a clock that runs and then he squeezes your arm where you can start to let yourself out right yeah um most nobody could do it they hit the water they'd immediately sort of panic and start to some of them would say, I he felt my arm, you know, after two seconds. That's not that's not fifteen yeah. you know, Mississippi's there. And I realized I'd be one hundred percent fine with that particular yeah. drill. I would I would have the person behind me, they would tell me, here's what's gonna happen. I'm gonna time this, I will alert you, and I uh, all I would turn off everything in my brain and go, Okay. We're just going to sit here. Well, you've done that Wim Hof breathing thing, too. You just do a little bit of that ahead of time in 30 seconds. Yeah, but it's – I don't – I mean, we can look it up. I don't even think it's a full 30 seconds. Maybe yeah, it's like 15 like 20 or 20 or something. Yeah. Or something. But the, the point is, is it's not really about holding your breath. It's about trusting – That you can get out. Once, yeah, once that you, you get can get stress. out and that there's somebody behind you who knows kind of what they're, they're doing. So same thing with jumping out of that helicopter – I assure you, they they were like, just do what we tell you, you'll be fine. The 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 shitty thing was a lot of people didn't, well, and they got hurt. Yes, oh. 
Yeah. But right. Drew, uh, help me explain to Adam in, in medical terms, mm. okay? Because he's telling himself he's playing the tough guy. That he, he can would, do it. No, no, he has, barely has a pulse. He'd be but, all right. But Adam. I wouldn't if, be good at some of the other stuff. I would I, do that. If I laid you down mm-hmm. and I blindfolded you. Mm-hmm. And I poured a bucket of water in your mouth, and I told you you're not drowning. Mm-hmm. How come those people can't tell their brain I'm not drowning? You're I talking just, about waterboarding. Yes. Yeah. I'm just saying it's not that simple to tell your brain when you're in that situation that I'm going to listen to those people and I'm going to stay down. That 15 seconds is a long time, even 30 seconds. It's true. I just question whether there's some bravado today. <laughs> <laughs> I will I will tell you the stuff I can do and the stuff I can't okay. do and that stuff I have many examples of me just doing whatever whatever that is. You could have done the the fall off the cliff where somebody else is controlling the the cable. I don't know if you saw that one. Yeah, maybe. I, don't know about I, the, I could have done the helicopter, I could have done the yeah, car. Yeah. Uh, one yeah. pretty easily. I yeah. don't like dirt and dust. Oh, so the you, other oof. one would be a lot of crawling through storm drains oh. with, filled with dirt and, uh, yeah. and shit all up my pants. I, that I wouldn't have gone. How, how about the one, do you think he could handle this one, where they, they put the guy in a room, locked the door, and made them watch MSNBC for eight hours? Right. <laughs> that is what he yeah. couldn't do. That's just tap yeah, out early. stuff he'd tap yeah, out Yeah, I'd have to tap out early. <laughs> so uh, now are they, they're going to do season two of that? And I have not heard their plans yet. Uh, there was... Some talk of it, and then uh, heard a little rumor that now that people have seen really what you go through, that they're afraid people would want too much money to do it because it's so dangerous. Who ended up lasting the longest? I can't tell you yet. I can tell you there are four there now. Oh, they're just down the, to four? This is the last day tonight, oh, okay. so uh, Wednesday or whatever. And so it's uh, Dwight Howard, Lakers. It's mm-hmm. uh, Carly Lloyd, soccer player. Danny Amendola, Patriots. And uh, then the Bachelorette. Um, Hannah Hannah Brown, wow! Hannah, I, I, the second I got in the desert with with that my group, first thing that jumped out at me were like, "Holy shit, these women are tough. They're mm. so tough." And I did not know that about them. We kind of would socialize a little bit going in, and I thought, "Wow!" First of all, youth does a lot, yeah, <laughs> that because the age is what got me. And then they're tough. Women are tough, and these particular women were tough. Did you did you do any training at all, like in anticipation? I had for this? two weeks. I had two weeks, and so I, and I at first I was like, "Come on, yeah, I can't do that." And like, where, I said, well, "Where are you taking me? Utah or something?" They go, "No, Jordan." And I'm like, "What? Wadi Rum Desert? Jordan? Jordan? Who are their Mexicans?" <laughs> I mean, who was like cleaning up this after is, lunch and stuff like that? <laughs> this is no place for half a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> no, the Jews were across the. Uh, no, on, on this show. Oh, in general, okay, okay, this right. They were next door in Israel, but uh, the I started training with weight packs and sprinting hills and stuff, and I was winding and feeling kind of shitty that physically at that point, much like when I walked in today, and uh, and I started feeling great. I thought maybe this is what I've been looking for. Maybe this will get me out of this funk. And I, then I started fighting for it a little bit, and they made me go through tr- just one cardiovascular test after another. And no problem, no problem with all that. And in the desert, no problem. I just got heat stroke all of a sudden. I was just yeah. out of it. It was bad. Good times. You didn't hydrate enough. <laughs> I know. Didn't hydrate enough, but the part you don't see that uh, handicapped me was I need a lot of water all the time. My age makes that you know mm-hmm. triple what it should be. You had two canteens. And if they were not topped off at all times, when they came and asked you, how's your water, and you weren't yeah, full, I saw that. they'd punish the whole group. Wow. Yeah. So I would just go, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Got it, I'm good, I'm good, staff, I'm good. I had empty canteens the whole fucking time. And so that's how I got in trouble. Oh, you're doing oh. for the group. Mm-hmm. How, how do we know, doctor, that this isn't symptoms of long COVID? It could have had something to do with COVID, given the fact that I had COVID two years earlier. But no, it was... So I've seen it a million times, but I in in eighty five year old women mostly, uh, frankly, uh, I didn't know that a sixty five year old male would get it and that fast and the, the kind of conditions. But it was it was I turned I did a little bit of research on it, and lo and behold, yes, it's very common. And two, I didn't realize that's like a forty percent fatality rate. So it's a good thing they stuck me in the ICU and when you had COVID. No, I had, oh, I he's had, talking uh, about dehydration, de- oh. heat stroke, and dehydration. Much more dangerous. Much more and dangerous. You got that on the show. My risk from COVID was two yeah. percent. My risk from heat stroke was forty percent. <laughs> so much. That's that's the the measure of risk. That's why when I had COVID, I was not concerned. Yeah. And when I had heat stroke, I was a little concerned. 
So, um, is there a vaccine for heat stroke? No, no vaccine. No. Oh, okay. Sorry. Know that. We can do uh, some blah, blah, blah. Does Dawson have blah, blah, blah? Do we have an intro for that? It's time for Blah, Blah, Blog. The game where we match the celebrity with their retarded online rant. Let's play. One of my favorite sounds ever is the sound of a crisp new newspaper being read over breakfast for an hour or so. The popping out of it, the folding, the scribbling on the crossword. I hope it never goes out of fashion in our digital world. It is too romantic. All right, so it's got to be somebody over 50. Mm-hmm. Oh, will you give us a choice? Yeah, I'll give Chris you a Chris Evans. Chris Evans. Katy Perry. Mm. Or AOC. Mm. Mm. Everyone too, under 50. Too young for me. I don't like that. Loving the newspaper. Uh, yeah. Yes, AOC. If I know one of these on people, do I, need, do I need to disclose that for ethical reasons? Or Who do you, you know? Do you know? I, I, one of them's my neighbor, but I, I don't want to say which one. But uh, Oh, really? Yeah, but maybe I should not be involved in I'll this one. I'll go with one. Chris Evans on that one. Although when you talk to him, he probably doesn't say you're his neighbor. I, think. <laughs> he I don't come up on the list. There's got to be someone in Hollywood who's close enough <laughs> that he can claim. As his neighbor. You know what I mean? Yeah. What are you saying? That my house isn't big enough? That no, I'm saying not I, I used hurtful. to live, li- I literally lived next door He's to Vince big, Vaughn. I would tell everyone Vince Vaughn's my neighbor. But Vince, Vince Vaughn, Vaughn didn't tell anyone Adam Carolla is his yeah, neighbor. Yeah, I get it. I get you it. came to the show, you didn't expect to get abused? Is well, that- I just <laughs> want to know if this is gaslighting. Is that what the... Uh, no, he doesn't gaslight. Just a okay. just straightforward abuse. Okay, okay. All right. So, so, <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. Uh, Chris Evans is an understated nice guy. Like, whenever mm. I've talked to him, he's, like, really, like, low-key. This is sort of grandiose, and it's sort mm. of, a, you know, it's mm. an announcement of who I am. It's romantic. Ro- mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I, I that doesn't sound like, I you know, the interaction I had with Katie did not lead me to believe that that, that would be something that she would be announcing. Mm. Right? What are all these I interactions, also, Drew? What are, I, I, I was on the mat. You were on the mat, Sanger. Wasn't she in there? No, wait. She wasn't in there. I, she used to be on Love Line a couple of times back when Stryker was the uh, co Oh. Yeah, back in the beginning days of her career. And, uh, you know, and, and I, I can interact with her somewhere else. But she seems – she's a substantial person, but I don't – I don't see her standing on newspaperness. I like Katy Perry, but I always say she looks like she's thinking about something stupid. Mm. That's her resting face is I'm thinking about something stupid. But AOC has a face that looks like she's thinking about something smart, but she's not. (laughs) She's thinking about something stupid and Katy's thinking about something smart. But don't tell their faces. Their faces are the opposite. I feel like they want us to pick AOC. So mm-hmm. that makes me okay. not want Interesting. to. Interesting. I, I like that. Yeah. the game. I like that. I will say Katy Perry doesn't get the newspaper delivered. Mm. And uh, Chris Evans, I don't even know. But it's the wrong <laughs> shirt for that outfit that Ooh. was showing on the screen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's – I'm going to go Chris Evans, final answer. Okay, not a bad choice, even though he's understated. Maybe it was a weak moment. <laughs> it was a loquacious <sighs> comment. I'm going to go the opposite reasoning of yours and say AOC – they're trying to make us say it's not AOC, but it is AOC. <laughs> I'm going to go Katy Perry. All right. Whoa. Good. Split the room. The blog belongs to Katy Perry. Yeah. There you go. Wow. I told Very you nice. she was thinking about something smart. Yes. Yes. <laughs> What's the score? <laughs> One to nothing. <laughs> oh, sh- I lost track. <laughs> I usually never put my two cents in about what happens on someone's movie set. It's a terrible tragedy what happened to cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Uh Uh But in no way in hell, actor Alec Baldwin should be charged with any negligence whatsoever. Most actors don't know anything about guns, especially if they didn't grow up around them. I'm sure Alec is already suffering enough over what happened, but to lay blame on him is terribly, terribly wrong. My first guess is Alec Baldwin. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's burner account. Yeah. 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 Is it Mickey Rourke, Mm. John Favreau, Mm. or Clive Owen? Mm. I just see Katy Perry up on the screen. There we go. (laughs) Those guys are my neighbors. Yeah. (laughs) Um, All right. Who's the lady on the left? (laughs) (laughs) That'd be Mickey Rourke. Miss Mickey Rourke, yeah. Oh. All right. I would say that. Clive Owen never says anything. 
I've never as heard he, him speak. And, you know, except uh, as a person, I, 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 as an actor and as a commercial, I'm, I'm a huge fan, but I've never seen him as a citizen say anything. Yeah. yeah. So, but the um, beginning said, I don't, I don't usually give my two cents on yeah. anything. So. Well, it's Ooh, good. Two cents. Yeah. I like Is that. Clive English? I think so. And then in England, who are their Mexicans? <laughs> and with a name like Clive? All right. I see. I don't even know if he has a British accent or anything because he's always in a movie doing something. American. And I have no idea. Where's he from? All right. Your name like Clive, it's got to be like, you know, so, Manchester. Uh, so here's the here's the thing. All uh, There's nothing worse than these, these blowhard actors going on the, the Fox shows going, you always check your gun. You never take, mm-hmm. you know, these people, this weird standard, mm-hmm. you know. Like, um, the same kind of people you go like, you know, like when you were younger, like you were like 23 and you took a shower with your girlfriend. Yeah. You know, you did that movie, like peed on her leg. And they're like, never. <laughs> what? And I'd be like, oh, come on. <laughs> really? It's I thought casual. everybody, how, how do you not do it? You know what I mean? They're like, get the fuck out of it. They act, they, yeah. they're very incensed. I don't know any actor who breaks down a revolver and looks looks at it before yeah. using it. Somebody hands it to you on the set and just says it's cold gun or it's yeah. safe or whatever. You right. go, the yeah, armor. fine. Yeah. You're thinking yeah. about your performance. You're his, thinking about your lines. His, Somebody's Googling the answer to my right. His problem is, Drew's on his phone. Problem, no, I'm reading about Clive Owens. It's fascinating. Yeah. I'm going to tell you about it. Yeah. Oh. Now, his... Baldwin's problem is doing that interview where he said he never squeezed the trigger and then the forensics come back and they go, the the trigger was squeezed and now we're arguing over that. He's lying, you know what I mean? Trigger squeezed or not. His attorney told him to say that. You know what I mean? But couldn't he also have been in shock? His attorney probably. His attorney should have told him no interviews is what the attorney, because then they use the interview. All right, where's Clive from? He is from Coventry, Warwickshire, England. Mm. Uh, born to a country music singer fa- father, which is interesting. Mm. Uh, Royal Academy of Dramatic Arts came over here in the nineties. Blah, mm. blah. I my favorite show of, of on television is uh, the Nick. He's, oh he's yeah, the, you, you love the Nick. Oh god. All right. Anyway, so- but who would my two cents and a lot of feeling about what goes on on a set sounds like a director mm. could be Favreau, right? Hmm. He sounds like a, a, my two cents guy, doesn't <laughs> yeah, he? Yeah, he may offer even three or four cents. Right. What do you got, Orny? I, f- I feel like the my two cents makes me think Mickey Rourke. Okay. Mm-hmm. It just feels like John wouldn't use that expression. But And mm-hmm. who would be defending Alec, too? Yeah, it would be a, cr- a crazy person, <laughs> Mickey Rourke, mm-hmm. if you want to call him crazy. I don't know if you can call somebody crazy nowadays, but... Yeah, it just that to me feels like again the obvious choice is John Favreau, and, and, and uh, I'm going Mickey Rourke. You're going Rourke? Yeah, Rourke. I, I go, see Mickey Rourke doing it. All right, well, who do you got? I'm gonna go Favreau. I go Favreau too. Mm. The blog belongs to Mickey Rourke. Mm, see? Uh, wow, there what's there just are. going out? Yeah. One one. All tied up. All tied up. No, it's not all I tied up. Zero. I got zero. No, it's not all tied up. Somebody was yeah. on their phone. <laughs> <laughs> Point down for that. No, this is like the same guy who couldn't keep the canteens full on the show (laughs) is on his phone. He has a a problem with rules. He had one job and one job only. That's right. This is the arrogance. That's why why I got dehydrated. (laughs) I've come to the decision that social media is a collection of echo chambers, and those with the biggest bullhorns are decimating conversations of merit. It's simply too exhausting to endure, honestly. I have a wonderful life. I'm going to go enjoy it. God bless you all. None of us in this room. <laughs> Is it Patrick Stewart? Mm. William Shatner? Ooh. Or James Woods? Mm. Uh, uh, no, is... James likes to talk too yes, much. Yes, he's, he's into it. Yeah. He, he's there. Yeah. He, he could be announcing he's taking a break. Could be. It's possible. Shatner might... Is, uh, no. It's the guy on the left, whoever that is. Patrick Stewart? Yeah, him. I don't mm. know. Shatner could have said that, right? Don't you think he could have said it? But he, I know Shatner fairly well. He, if it was horse related, <laughs> it definitely would have Shatner. come out of Shatner's mouth. Um, I uh, now we got two guys who skippered the Star mm-hmm. Trek Enterprise or whatever, yeah. right? Oh, interesting, right? 
So, and then there's Woods. Woods. I've not heard much from Woods lately. I it's noticed usually that a controversial too. Just, tweet just or two thinking spat about that. out. Just thinking about that. Yet he is the guy with the bullhorn often. Mm-hmm. Hmm. I'm going to go with Patrick Stewart. I was thinking Patrick Stewart as well. Well, boys, <laughs> and I wanted to go last on this particular one because I think it's James Woods. Okay. And what I did was I misled you guys because <laughs> I believe James Woods is the type of cl- clown guy that would say, I'm done with social media, but really he can't stay away and from And then not social- be done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So final yeah. answer, James Wood, let's announce Orny Adams is the winner. The blog belongs to... James Woods. Oh. Wow, good for you. Good call. And I'll tell you something. Wow. And we can roll the tape on the last show. And at one, some point, I will apologize to Dr. Drew for maligning him. Mm-hmm. And maybe Corolla. I'm not too sure about Corolla. He's not here. Uh, at least you showed up. And I appreciate that. Um, but I came in here last time, and I kicked the crap out of everybody with the nerd game. Oh, mm-hmm. nerd walking. Yeah. Nerd walking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So are we done? This game's over, right? One, no. two, zero. There's two more. Yeah. Oh, I don't know if I can hold up the energy. (laughs) (laughs) It's a lot. It takes a lot to do this. Hmm. This is not just for me. Life is fucking hard. Gotta be strong enough and pull those who want to go on my adventure. With me along, we get strength from each other. Is it Cher? (laughs) Jose Canseco? Or 50 Cent? I, I'm. What was the first line again? <laughs> this is not just for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's all right. So mm. I'm, I'm befuddled <laughs> and somewhat amused by all the platitude speakers <laughs> that have been risen, bubbled to the surface of this cauldron called life, <laughs> where they're just like, it takes all of us to be the best of us. I mean, when you listen to Michelle Obama talk, that's all she says. I don't even know what she's saying anymore. Like, we need to find our inner light. Mm. Everyone has a light. We need to see the light in each other. Mm. It's like, I don't know what the fuck she's even talking about anymore. And we all just, Meghan Markle or Oprah or whatever, I'm just like, oh, yeah, 1,000%. It feels like insane empty calories to me. I'm so confused by it. It has nothing to do with running a society, a school, a business, or governing, or anything. And clearly we're not listening because we've been instructed to find the light in everyone and then express it and worship it. And all we do is yell at each other. I find it shocking. Mm. That the author of Who's Your Mexican <laughs> right. is having trouble. Now an audio book as well. <laughs> is it? In oh, how many yeah. languages is this book translated? Well, I, I, uh, Ted Nugent voiced yeah. the English. Oh, he should write or, the foreword. Well, yeah, he did. Oh, he did? Yeah. Yeah. And is there a prologue in a, uh, like, where are we going with this? Who's it dedicated to? I said, how about all the people selling flowers? Well, what I'm hoping to do is what my grandparents had a book in like 1972. It would say like France on $10 a day, Mm. you know, and then they'd get another one that said Hungary on $10 a day. And then it was England on 10. There's all a series of books on $10 a day. What year is this? Because that seems like a lot of money for that era, $10 a day. The 70s. Mm. Uh, does that include housing and yeah travel? You do you to ten dollars a day spending to go around France. That was your that was your budget. Wow. Yeah, and Fo- Fyodor's Fodor's whatever Fodor's. his name was. Yeah, F O D E R S. Yeah, so I'm looking to kind of do that with who are your Mexicans? You know what I mean? I, I have to do a book for France, then I do one for England, I do one for Czechoslovakia. You know what I mean? It, yeah, it's a never ending series. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. This is going to be very consuming. Do you anticipate keeping up the podcast while working on this project, or is this? Are you announcing today that we're stepping aside? We're putting pause. No, I on will, the, I will uh, use get ghost, it on. Eight? I will use ghost writers for most of this. Really? Oh yeah. And who will be your ghost writer? <laughs> the will, Mexican. That's yeah. what I thought. They will write. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing any heavy lifting. <laughs> all right. Let them sweat it out over a word processor all day. Word process. <laughs> Look, they don't have the modern accoutrements that we have. It was like you and Katy Perry should curl up and read right. newspaper. So back to your empty, empty slogans. 
Is that a female thing? Could it be Cher? It's mostly- Because you mentioned f- females. All three you mentioned were females. It's a female thing, and then dudes start saying it so they can get the females to suck their dick. Oh. So that's the male version uh, of, of it. Uh-huh. That's how it works. Yeah. Like, hey, there's enough dingbat chicks with platitudes around here yeah. that if I start- shooting some of those out of my mouth, maybe I can get my dick sucked. <sighs> so that's how the guys work with it. Cher, this isn't eloquent enough. She, she's shorter on words. What is you know Jose what I mean? Canseco doing on this list? I get burned <laughs> by this every time I go, if it's not him saying why it, is why there? is he there? Yeah, I, I've been burned by it a dozen times doing this, but I'm going Jose Canseco. Has Jose been on the list before? Never. That's what he's Never. doing on the list. He's there to burn you. That's yeah. why these guys put him on there because he doesn't belong. I'm going to take. I'm going to yeah. take the conspiracy even further. Yeah. Okay. Please. The picture they chose. Mm. Now they could have chosen a picture of a younger. Uh, it's true. Jose, yeah. a healthier, where he doesn't look crazy with the bat. Mm-hmm. They chose this to be misleading. <laughs> and this is where the media is at fault, mm-hmm. Adam, including your show. There mm-hmm. is biased mm-hmm. right now. I'm mm-hmm. going Jose. I'm going 50 Cent. <laughs> the blog belongs to Cher. Oh! oh! That was wow. my first. <laughs> wow. What year was that quote? That was a couple days ago. Oh. Yeah. What was what she was talking about? about? Yeah. She's crazy on Twitter. Like she's really? she's absolutely nuts. Her, her tweets are just stream of consciousness. I I can't even understand well, them. We'd have to kind of know that. I think. What does he say when he announces the winner? The blog goes to. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. What does that mean? Well, we've been doing this game before tweets. So when be, we would read celebrity blogs, oh. but now oh. we just, you get out evolved. the word processor, yeah. you fire out a blog. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Here's Adam typing his book. <laughs> But yeah, it's I involved wish in tweets, Instagram posts. <laughs> All right, we'll do one more. Yeah. Orny and I will pick different pick different celebrities. To make sure that we separate the winner here. Is mm-hmm. that the plan? Yeah, but at minimum, well, we're, we're not, going down in a We're not tied. tied. Nobody got that oh, one. Oh, oh, oh. It's one, two were... to zero. Uh, yeah. And if you pick different ones, we could end in a tie. But oh, we yeah, have a no. tiebreaker. So don't worry. This I did the f- Everybody's in. Yeah, Remember right. last time I but I did something tricky because I knew I couldn't lose. Dr. Drew technically eliminated, but he can oh. still guess. Here oh. we go. So this yeah. is the final guess Jeopardy? This is sort of final Jeopardy? Is that how that works? I say if I'm beautiful. I say if I'm strong. You will not determine my story. I will. I will speak and share and fuck and love, and I will never apologize to the frightened millions who resent that they never had it in them to do it. Lizzo. Mm. Lily Ellish. Ellish. Mm. Is it Lil' Kim? Mm. Lil' Amy Schumer? Mm. Or Lil' Lena Dunham? Mm. I want to point out before anybody talk that is essentially the repackaged version of In the Arena. Hmm? That quote from from Roosevelt mm. in the arena. Oh, the, the man, man, oh, right. man in the, the arena. Yeah, yeah, he whatever. Those. That's exactly what that is. Mm. Yeah. All right. So, um, mm. Lena Dunham. By the way, Drew knows me long enough to know I keep a list of people who aren't funny, but in the height <laughs> of their power. Everyone thought they were funny, and I've always explained it's the it's what I did with the presidents of the United States of America, the band. I remember, like <laughs> in nineteen ninety four and a half, I was going to Jimmy. This is a novelty act; they're not going to be around in two years. And he's like, "Are you kidding me? What was the they're a great one? band." Remember that? And I'm like, going they're, they're going to be time. they're they're going to be gone. I would explain to everyone who wasn't going to be around doing yeah. comedy, and I, I would never go. You know, I've never seen. 2001, like Jerry Seinfeld pff, flash in the pan. You're not going to hear from that guy. I go, there's, there's plenty of super funny men and women, but Lena Dunham, when everyone was worshiping at the altar of Lena Dunham yeah. for some reason, I was like, she's not funny. It's not going to be around. Have you gotten any wrong that you said they're not going to be around and now they're huge? You. That's right. I said, this guy's going to be right. famous. <laughs> 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 Orny Adams will be a household name. Mark my words. By 2008, I told Jimmy. I said, <laughs> no. No, I, uh, I was sort of, uh, you know, it was kind of, I, I, I had a little Tom Green moment. I had a little Polly Shore moment. Now, I like Tom Green and Polly Shore. What I'm saying is 
these guys were white hot. Mm. And all I was saying is, is they're going to slide down to wherever we are. It's, oh. it's not this party yeah. isn't going to keep it's not going. Yeah. Right. Now, I wouldn't say that about Sasha Baron Cohen. I just go, this guy's a super genius, you know, or or or, you know, Albert Brooks or someone like that. But Lena, I think I'm proven correct. I, I don't think we're going to be hearing that much from her anymore. And, and Amy's usually funny. Right? Yeah. She can be funny. There should be a joke in there. There should be a joke if, in there. She, she, usually, wrote, yeah. she usually throws something in. A little Kim, I have no idea. Is that her? Little, little Kim? Little Kim. Little Kim. Yeah. Kim. yeah. yeah. I, have no I don't idea. like Lil' Kim. Why? <laughs> <laughs> What'd she do? What'd she do so, to you? <laughs> when I had my novelty gay assistant, who turned out just, just to be my assistant after we stopped filming this TV show, oh, yeah. where we thought it'd be funny if I had a super gay assistant who didn't agree with anything. Well, all your saying. assistants yeah. are named Matt, so I guess it was Matt? Yeah, Matt Fondelier, right? No, not Matt Fondelier. There was other Matts before Matt Fondelier. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to... I just remember him, before I fired him, he was explaining to me he didn't like my attitude or oh, something. Yes. Oh, oh, that's but anyway, smart. <laughs> I can't <laughs> remember. That but as an assistant. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, at some point, uh, I <laughs> caught him or realized that while... What, what year, figure out what year Lil' Kim was in prison. She must have been <laughs> in prison in like, this would have been like 2006 or, oh no, let's say 2000 and, yeah, yeah. 2005, 2005 in July, she was sentenced to a year. 2005, uh, 2006. Okay, Why? so how Why? did I know she was in prison? She was lying to a jury about her friend's involvement in a shooting four years earlier. Uh. Because... My assistant was corresponding with her in prison as me. Oh, what? So he would send her <laughs> notes like, stay strong, I'm thinking about you, but it's me. Oh. <laughs> Which I did not authorize. That's so Lil, identity theft. Lil' Kim thinks you like her. Right. Everyone turned their back on Lil' Kim, or Lil' Kim, Except for Adam Carolla. <laughs> Nobody in the Hollywood community was courageous enough to stand up for Lil' Kim while she's incarcerated, mm. except for the guy from The Man Show. But then she got out of prison. No fruit basket. Nothing. nothing. No songs dedicated. Not worked in any rap lyrics. Is it possible that she doesn't know who you are? Like, you know what I mean? Like... You didn't get to you that know how level. Big I am in no, women's no, you're prisons. Not. You're not. <laughs> All right, I get what you're no, doing that, now. Yeah, always payback time <laughs> because that Vaughn guy who lives next door to you, he doesn't even mention you. So how presumptuous! This is the arrogance that that murder guy who murdered those people in South Carolina to get up on the stand that you think little Kim knows. Strangely you? She enough, has no idea. Let me tell you who she knows: Jimmy Kimmel. Dr. Mm. Drew mm. and Orny Adams. And strangely <laughs> That's enough, who she knows. Orny, strangely enough, Max Apat is communicating with Murdoch in much in the same manner as his his assistant used to do with Lil' Kim. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So he has a so, fan in jail now. A lot of notes of encouragement from just, the Adam Carolla. I'm just saying, it's, I don't see her listening. Star basic cable. Yeah. And I get nothing in return. I'm sorry, but like I, in all her songs, I never hear her mention the man show. I never heard her mention it. She's not into cars. I, don't, I mean, like, I don't know why you think she, she just thinks she's getting letters from a guy named Adam Carolla. But Listen, you don't search him out. I mean, I've been in many women's prison. They have a library. They have the internet. Yeah. <laughs> She's able to use her word processor yeah. to look me up. That's all I'm saying. I'm thinking of this, Drew. I'm, I'm just workshopping this. This isn't a formal pitch. But I think we all have had this happen to us in our lives. And I'm thinking of a book called Who's Your Little Kim? Oh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who, who has ignored you? Because it's it's hurtful. I well, understand. I'd say my mom. I, your hippie mom. Yes. I would say possibly my dad, but they would be my little Kim. <laughs> but I feel my like little Kim. not family, people outside of your family mm. that have ignored you. Well, mm. Adam's a bad example because Adam's little Kim is little Kim. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I already got my little Kim. <laughs> she, uh, you know what her big hit was? Well, like, don't diminish her career now that she doesn't. Acknowledge what you. was the big hit? I forget. Uh, Dandel used to play it in the man show office all the time. I think it was Lil Kim. You guys can look it up. The lyrics were 
I used to be scared of the dick. <laughs> then I threw lips at the shit. <laughs> 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 Which well, I think is Jeff Ross's actual last you're, name. You're a Lips charged shelter. Tim the Russian rapper would have loved oh, this. Oh, Tim. <laughs> Can you imagine yeah. him doing that? Uh, I just right. got a text from Little Kim. Uh, she says, no, has no idea who you are. <laughs> oh, really? No idea. Yeah. Yeah. She sorry. over at Chris Evans' house? She is. Uh, <laughs> she's reading a paper. Trying to walk the... <laughs> over and borrow a cup of sugar for morning. <laughs> uh, All right. Uh, Big Mama thing. Is that the song? Yeah, they're saying it is. Yeah. How, hmm. It's um I used to be scared of the dick, now I throw lips to the shit. Yeah. Handle it like a real bitch. <laughs> Put you that on a loop. You don't know this one? No. No. No? No. You cover a lot of standards when you sing yeah, through. Sanders, you don't you don't yeah. do this one? Uh, arias. It kind of reminds me of uh Nessun Dorma, but other than that, no. Yeah, the farmers What's, market band I got I wish they covered this yesterday. I got land in Switzerland. What was that uh even got Saint oh. We got to hear it. All right, Orny, who do you think? I'm going Leah D- Dunham. So, yeah, same. Oh, feels that way. It, and can I say why, doctor? I think it respects please, this please. insight that I have. Without, I don't have a medical degree. I don't uh, proclaim. I just uh, well, you don't have to put me down. <laughs> um, you know, that's kicking down. I <laughs> believe there's a desperation to that that uh, lyric, mm. uh, to that quote, mm-hmm. and it feels like somebody acting out. Mm. Interesting. Mm. I'll go, Lil Kim. Oh. Well, the blog belongs to Amy Schumer. Oh. oh. Orny Adams still wins the game. There you go. Shout well done. Hey, you. This is the problem with comedy. You say you eliminate Amy Schumer because nothing funny came out of her mouth. Just a bunch of shit. I don't know. She's a rich lady. I, I don't know. What is the who's going to tell her how to look and who's. Uh, oh when was this? When, when did she say that? A few weeks ago. Oh, we need to hear it one more time, Doug. It makes me actually sad. It does. Hers. Yeah, it's like, it's not, you shouldn't be thinking like that, Amy. I say if I'm beautiful, I say if I'm strong, you will not determine my story. I will. I will speak and share and fuck and love, and I will never apologize to the frightened millions who resent that they never had it in them to do it. My God, what, is she, a, what is she responding to? That was a speech to a women's gala. Mm. Yeah, so that's it. Well, until you- next time, keep your fingers on your keyboards and your heads up your asses so we can play another round of blah, blah, blah. So, a couple to be of fair things. to her, she's just trying to rile up the yentas yeah, at the I, speech. I, I get that. Mm. But so, a couple of things she said are specifically things that other people determine. How you look to somebody else and things like that. It's like that's everybody the, but you gets to decide if you're beautiful. That those are the rules for beauty. It's yeah. everybody but you. Right. Nobody believed in us. Well, I'll give you a let's let's do a hypothetical. Okay. Orny? Yes. You're fairly easy on the eyes. I disagree. I think you're attractive. Me too. Oh, thank you. Uh, here's the hypothetical. I would love to ask all these lying bitches this question. Who, yeah, you have one or two scenarios. Either you can think you're beautiful and no one else does, or everyone can think you're beautiful, but you don't think you're beautiful. Which would you rather be? They would all go, I would know that I'm beautiful. I will take that. And then I would give them one sip of one beer, and then they would admit that they would rather everyone else in society think they're beautiful than them. I would much rather have society think I was handsome rather than me think I'm handsome. You know, inter- I don't care. Interesting. There, there's so many things about the female brain that, that we don't understand as men. And uh, I was talking to Christina P., Tom Segura's wife, the other day, and she said something that caught my attention. She goes, oh, for women, it's so it's so alluring, so um, – I forget the word she used, not like sort of exciting – to be picked. You're the one. To be picked amongst others. Mm-hmm. That's a deeply moving experience for a woman. For a man, I, I didn't even, couldn't even relate to it. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. That's yeah. something I never Makes thought sense. about. Yeah. I, I wonder if you don't think you're good looking, could you appear good looking if you're not giving off that energy? Mm. Like, does this hold weight? You know, could this? That's the lore. People want to believe. Yeah, they that's like that true. confidence. The yeah, confidence they, doesn't make them. That's high. what I'm saying. If you don't feel like you're good looking, you're not going to project that onto the world. Well, they may you not know, think you're good looking. I've never thought about this. That 
works in one direction. It works from a man to females. It, they then think, I'm attracted to this guy because he may be short and he may be balding, but he f- carries himself in such a way with so much confidence. So it actually works on them. And then I think they internalize that and go, that's what guys want. We're completely visual. It doesn't work on us <laughs> at all. But I think it's them projecting that it works on them. Everyone knows the story. They went to high school with these guys. There's a professional version of mm-hmm. it where the guy's just, you know, Lyle love it. He's just a ladies man. You know what I mean? Well, not to us. Yeah. It doesn't look like anything to us, but, but it works very nicely on the ladies. So they think there's some version where they can think they're strong and beautiful and project that out, even though they're not, and yeah. we're not buying it. So I think, I think, I think it's projection. I think it's yeah, you're sort of- right. Because if you ask a woman, they always say, "Yeah, I love I love confidence in a man." But w- men never go, "I love a woman who's confident." But we're like, no, but we're, I'm not that we're, argument. I don't want to uh, be accused of having said that women can't do things to be more attractive. There's right. a lot of things they can do, but they have to sort of. It's almost like they have to hypnotize us. You know, they have to like work work with stuff. We're that, too that, simple. We're so simple, exactly. Yeah. I thought you you could you could convince us of things really easily with a lot of you know makeup and other, you know hair we we respond to that stuff we do and and by the way it's nice to have somebody that is it's not is it not it's not confidence it's something else we we like in women what would that be that's sort of a an ease an ease and a presence and that kind yes. of thing like that all right we'll take a, a quick I, break i have a we, quick question no, for the doctor yeah no, no we got to take a quick break oh. but we got we're we have coming calls back. questions we got as some well. calls up there i got i got uh, little kim's song <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that right after this. Well, let me tell you about Morgan and Morgan. I was just listening to an old ACS episode. My buddy Chris was on and uh, he was injured. He's, he was run over by a car intentionally and he got like $11,000 from his insurance company. <laughs> he needed to find and get hold of my friends over at Morgan and Morgan. If you're injured, Check out Morgan & Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, 100-plus offices nationwide, over 800 lawyers, more than $15 billion recovered for their clients. Submitting a claim with Morgan & Morgan is so easy. It's more like uh, using an app to order takeout than hiring a lawyer. Submit a claim without leaving the couch. Just open your phone and uh, click in. A few clicks, like eight clicks or so, and you're done. If you're ever injured in an accident, check out our friends over at Morgan and Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. Right, Dawson? For more information, go to forthepeople.com slash Adam or dial pound law, pound 529. From your cell phone, that's F-O-R thepeople.com slash Adam or pound L-A-W, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. In celebration of Jim Carolla's upcoming 92nd birthday, here's a list of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Number 24. Eaten at a three-star restaurant. Just one of 92 things Jim Carolla has never done. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla Show. More more accurately phrased, never eaten above a two star uh, restaurant. Yeah, because you some people may mistake that and think he oh, skipped to the four star. Who are Jim Carolla's Mexicans? Uh, his wife. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I remember I've seen that. I remember I had lunch with him like ten years ago, and he was complaining. Mm-hmm. He was like, "Ah, stepmom, she's out." She's on the ladder. She's cleaning out the gutters, and she's talking to the guy about doing this, and she's doing, she's doing all this. Like, relax, relax. I said, you better fucking hope she doesn't relax. She does everything yeah. here. You understand? Yeah. I, I do like the people who don't do anything get annoyed. He's like, How he's okay always doing something. It's like, <laughs> yeah, because you don't do anything. That's why she doesn't want to be on the fucking ladder cleaning out the gutters. <laughs> she wants you to do it, but you don't do any of that. You have the temerity to be annoyed by it. Ugh. Yeah, I've dealt with. How a few old is of those she plans. that she's up on the ladder? At the time, you know, she was probably like sixty-nine or seventy mm. or something. Mm-hmm. 
I've seen those gutter commercials. No woman's <laughs> supposed to be up on that ladder. <laughs> They had whole seminars where they're talking about gutters. So your ga- dad wasn't handy like you? Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, it, I'm asking the wrong... No, There's a history of this take answer? A nap. Okay. My, Forget it. Strike that. <laughs> so you, didn't let, you didn't let me ask Dr. Drew the question, <laughs> so now it's still in me. <coughs> we No, my dad didn't do anything, but it's, it's not... What is being handy? Being handy is sort of like saying... You know, I don't know how to make my kids lunch to bring with them to school. It's like, yes, you do, or you can figure it out. You don't want to get up before they get up and make sandwiches for them. I I get it. Like, I don't want to do that either, but let's not, let's call it what it is. Like being handy is just a little curiosity meets a little motivation. It's, it's not a skill, and per practice. se. Yeah, it's a practice. It's a little bit of, I, I do things for myself. Yeah. I take care of business. Yeah. But, like, we've talked about Ken, my neighbor, who knows everything. Chris? And Chris? Ken. Chris? Ken. Oh. Chris? Yeah, well, I don't want to <laughs> say Chris. Chris Evans, I thought. Yeah, Chris Evans, when he comes over and, you know, mm-hmm. fix my toilet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he knows little tricks yes. that I would never, if you don't grow up around, he grew up, he's a, no. he's a Kansas guy, or he's an like Oklahoma and so I'm saying, you didn't grow up around this. Yes. I didn't realize your hatred for your dad ran this deep mm. that you lashed out by being handy. Yes, I rebelled by learning skills that had a practical <laughs> application. Right, and then every time that woman got up on the ladder, mm-hmm. it when he's yelling at her, he's yelling at you. Oh, wow. Yeah, except he never got out of the chair to yell it at him. <laughs> he just never did. Yeah, that also required motivation. <laughs> yeah, it required something. He didn't do that. All right, we have a little Kim song. <laughs> it's going to bring me back to the man show office. What year is this from? 21. She wants to come 21 times? Mm, good for her. All right, let's uh, roll down a couple calls here. Mike, Mike uh, sorry, Mark, line one, 65, Arizona. Hey, Adam. Hey, what's going How on? How are you today, buddy? Good. Hey, proud of your boy, Doc. I don't know who the fuck that third guy is, but he seems all right. He's <laughs> fair to Midland. Jeez. I had it's really high you. hopes for him in like 05, and it just didn't really come to fruition. But he works. It's just part of a Betty well, Ross having a... me on. <laughs> yeah. So I was, speaking, I was speaking with my wife last night, and I'm so glad Dr. Drew's on because this is kind of something he could speak about. We believe that progressive people in these big cities are keeping these homeless as shooting pets. As pets. Look, so if they, they were if they were pets, that, Im- that implies some responsibility for caretaking, which they do not. They they use them as tools for sure for their shitty policies and ideologies, and they're. Li- I think it's murder. I, it's certainly manslaughter uh, because the, the the way they are allowing people to th- the structures they have set up leave people to die of addiction. They they deny that it's a progressive illness. They deny that their policies are doing this. They prevent people from actually helping these folks. And that's it. They're going to die. You, you, know the, you know the problem, really, if you just think about it, the homeless advocate expert, uh, we let people anoint themselves. Like, I'm a race expert. <laughs> you know, I'm Al Sharpton. I speak for black people. Like, oh, yeah, okay. Well, well, here's a message to give back to the black community and then tell us what they thought. Fuck off. There are no homeless experts. And then there becomes this sort of coalition and the money gets behind it. They're like, now you want you want policies? Well, hold on. I'm an expert. You're not an expert. No one's a fucking expert. Look out your window. These people are ODing and dying in the streets. We're all fucking experts, shithead. No, there are experts. These are sick people. The yes, experts that take care of sick people are called doctors and nurses, but they are not allowed in this outdoor asylum that they've created. It's literally a hospital without walls. And no doctors, nurses. Why aren't they allowed? Because these people are live. Is my mic on? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Stop oh, you, throwing you, your mic you, your, around. Your volume okay, uh, they're living their best life. Who are you to say? What, what's they want to do drugs? So what? It's up to them. Let them do what they want to do. There's no zero understanding of brain disorders, and because they are not doctors, they're not psychologists. They have no fucking idea what they're talking about, and they they in their massive denial about this being a progressive illness. And people are dying as a result. 
What? How many years ago? Was it three years ago? You tried to be an advisor on the LA. That was like a year and a half city ago. City council. No, that was I was called by the chairman of the LA uh, board of supervisors, and she said, "I want you to go on this LASA thing, this this or- organization that sort of d- distributes the billions of dollars they have for homelessness." And I was like, "No, nah, come on! I, I, this just sounds like torture to me. It just sounds awful." Then I then she begged me, "Please, please!" I thought, "All right." I, I should go in with my an open heart and open mind and learn what they're doing so I can understand better what exactly is going on here. Oh my God! People reacted like <laughs> like fucking Beelzebub was put, pointed to the, the only doctor, only physician would have been. I would have been the only physician anywhere in any of the organizations serving homelessness. All right, it's too L.A. Much Times that. had to uh, launch against you. That witch. <laughs> Who was that? Bitch? I, I wish I could remember now. J- Jackie something. Please, maybe. Uh, you got you help me. That, we, but she. But here's the thing. She. She goes. The. Uh, the. Uh, you wanted a volunteer. The board of this. medical quality assurance says that he has a license in California. Uh-huh. I called her up and said, "I fucking two boards. I was assistant clinical professor. What the fuck are you doing? Uh-huh. Why did you ask me? Why did you look at my YouTube? Why did you look at Google me? Look at my website. Anything. I. Uh, I have years and years and years of leadership positions in hospitals and in academic positions." You didn't ask and you didn't look and you made it seem like I'm just some sort of retard, some sort of random guy off the street. It's terrible. It's just what, disgusting. What is the solution? What would Dr. Easy. Drew do? Oh, oh easy. It's, I've been, I did it for 30 years. I treated these people. These are, these are my patients dying on the street. You need more residential beds. You need more step-down care. You need more psychiatrists. You need uh, the change in the laws. You have to stop legalizing drug use, stop legalizing trafficking, stop legalizing camping. You have to make people, you have to address people and go, hey, you can't do this. You got to come over here. It's all you have to do is ask something of people who are dying of this disease and get around people like me who know how to do motivational enhancement and keep us there while we work on them and do the work and get them detoxed. There's so much. So to when do. you say this disease, are you talking about addiction? Addiction's the primary thing on the street, but also things like schizophrenia is out there. At maybe five percent of these people have that. And schizophrenia, if it were dementia and you didn't treat it, you'd be guilty of patient abuse. But the exact same symptoms caused by another illness called schizophrenia, you're not allowed to touch. And the crazy thing is you can't change the natural history of dementia. They're going to get worse no matter what we do. With schizophrenia, if you stabilize the condition early, they can live relatively normal lives and be preserved. You let it go unchecked, they're destroyed for life. But a lot of these people with addictions, I think you would know better than me, but my, uh, I feel like they don't want help. They're in an illness state where they don't know what's going on. And when you get them two weeks outside of it, they literally look back and go, what the fuck? People left me like that? I can't believe it. It's yeah. called anisognosia. It's actually a brain condition that prevents them from seeing what's happening to them. Of course they don't want it. I've never treated an addict that didn't want to do drugs. Mm. That's the disease state. Right. People came in because their family made them come in. Their drug, the uh, courts made them come in. Something made them come in, always. And but Gavin it. Newsom says a real face uh, of homelessness yeah. is a mother of three yeah. with a full-time yeah. job. Well, it's Jacqueline Cosgrove, by the oh, way. It, this is the headline. <laughs> <laughs> Drew, are there? Are there <laughs> I, I, but listen, I let, look. You go. So, what are you being a douche to Jacqueline Cosgrove for? Well, because they're getting people killed all yeah. day, every day yes. with their fucking horrible rhetoric. Yes, as if the LA City Council is doing a good job of homelessness. You have a doctor who'd be the only doctor, yeah, and, I, and I had a nice volunteer. I had an interview. They said, "I'm going in with an open mind, open heart. I want to see what's no, going on there." No. Oh no, no, you're no. some sort of criminal that wants to criminalize. Uh, homelessness. You want to put homeless people in jail. It's the last thing I want to do. All are right, there so any? Are there what any? Year is this from? Are there any Sorry. states or countries that are handling this situation better? Every other country in the world, other than us, would never, never do something like this. No other country does this. Yeah. This is some insane ideology that's causing people right. with psychiatric disease to die. And most states do a much better job than California. What, California's what the years, worst by far. When is this from? So this is from 20. April of 2021. First off, um, the the headline, Dr. Drew is the wrong choice for LA's homelessness authority. That was the, that was the Times editorial board. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, so. Right. And, then, but, and then Jacqueline reported so after he is, got pulled. This is coming on two years ago. Did they appoint another doctor? Then if you're the no, wrong I doctor, Andy, and then what have they done about the problem? No doctors. Uh, I think Andy Bales finally got in there, which I fully support. He's the... LA Union Mission guy. 
All right, let's they go. Got, they got some really good snarky lines in here. Like, okay. Stop it. Dr. Drew, Dr. Quotes, Drew, as he is known in his many media appearances. <laughs> like, he's not known that around the hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just in media. His media appearances. All right. <laughs> well, there is a question. She should be ashamed of herself. It was they the all, worst reporting ever. They all It was should. really disgusting. Look, the same editorial board called Larry Elder the middle-aged black man from South Central, the, the, the new, black face of white supremacy. Yeah. They're just fucking, they're, they're, they're fucking nuts. Yeah. And they're assholes, by the way. And there's no bargaining with the no, LA Times. No. You become a shit I, rag I have that said no forever, one reads anymore. I don't do, I, I, and I filled Catherine Barga that when she asked me to do the interview. She goes, oh, Jacqueline Cargo, she's good. She's all right. You can, you can trust her. So I thought, all right, I'll go in be carefully, but I'll go in. And because my heart was clear, I just want to go in and learn about this thing, what they're doing. This is what I get. All right. These, uh, these people are disgusting. Oh, my God. Wendy, 53. Got a question for Drew. Uh, hi, guy. Hi, guy. <laughs> anyway, hi, guys. Um, I just um, wanted to talk about the medical industry, and maybe this kind of um, goes from what you guys were just talking about. But um, I never thought in America that going to pick up a regular prescription would be such a problem, but everything is backordered now. Like, mm. you, I, I went to pick up, I have a really bad lung disease. I'm dependent on albuterol for my nebulizer. They don't have it. You call around to other pharmacies, yeah. they don't have it. I've noticed that albuterol is short. What, what lung disease? Do you have asthma or CP or something? No, I, I mean, have uh, cartaginer uh, syndrome, so I have uh, ciliary dyskinesis. Oh, my. Um, well, that's so, nice. yeah, I, it's bad. I'm on a vest, you know, I'm on a vest like four times a day, and I have to be on a nebulizer, you know, at the same time. And uh, I always call my prescriptions in super early to and give. So, you know, Wendy, the crazy thing is, I think you know, there's like there's a lot of other alternatives to uh, albuterol now, like Zopinex and things like that, that are actually much more expensive. But that's they put you in that position where the insurance is going to have to cover that. So, talk to your doctor or pharmacist about getting some alternative things going. Thanks, uh, Wendy. One more. But your we'll point is well taken, that, that the fact that we can't get drugs, can't get medicine. I mean, this is... That and catalytic converters. Yeah. Where are we supposed to look when the caller's talking? We're all looking at the screen. Is there? Is that where we're supposed to... Or should I we would look say, at you, Adam? I would or? say within. <laughs> you said some things that were very hurtful. I think you uh, started today, today. And I think for you... <laughs> Your best look would go inward. You know I, what I mean? I really think, examine some of the things, some of the accusations. I think that some moment the, where you said, I didn't live up to your expectation, <laughs> and that you put Jimmy in there, which makes it even more hurtful, oh. I feel like that's going to be isolated, and it's going to go viral at my expense. No. And there's a lot of truth to it, so that no. is hurtful. Not, we need peace, you guys. Not from this show. Yeah, you got to have a name to go viral. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, my God. Vince Vaughn just texted me. <laughs> he said, there's no way you live next door. There's no way. Oh, he promptly moved out. <laughs> uh, Ryan? Hi, guy. Hi, Hi guy. guy. What's going on? Uh, uh, not too much. So uh, on Adam and Drew a couple weeks back, you were talking about uh, how the social movements have all gone totally awry and they're sort of proclaiming crazy things. So I have a, a theory that I think you'll agree with one, and then another that sheds a, puts a little bit of nuance on it. Um, I mispronounced nuance. Uh, so uh, first is uh, what Douglas Murray, not sure if you've heard of him, he wrote a book called yeah. Madness of Crowds that's all about this issue. Um, but he calls it the St. George's Retirement Syndrome. So St. George is a dragon, went out and slayed the dragon, and after all the dragons were dead, he could be seen slaying smaller beasts until in the later years of his life, he was from this sort of thin air. Yeah, so yeah they need something. Essentially, yeah. you know, with gay rights, it's like, okay, we've got marriage, we've got everything. Now we want, I don't know, like, it's something beyond that, more than equal. Yeah, but they, um, they want to push back. They don't want what they say they want. They, they say... You'd be horribly an antisocial if you said, what I want is to be combative mm -hmm. and agitated and pushed back. No one would listen right. to you. You have to say, what I want is gay marriage. And then you go, okay, here's gay marriage. And they go, okay, moving on. 
and then we'll get to transgendered bathrooms and birthday cakes and whatever the hell else we're going to get it, on to. It, it is interesting. I'm trying to think about how it relates to Don Quixote, which was really a parody of a previous generation's values, right? The old knights and their old uh, chivalry and all that stuff. And they, he went out to find that where there wasn't anything and ends up tilting at windmills and well, all the, the things yeah, that the imaginary example, things he did. Like a more sort of concrete example, the inverse is like <laughs> World War II. <clears throat> we wanted to beat Germany, we wanted to beat Japan, and then once we did that, pretty much packed it up and just went home and just sort of got back got back to it. But that's an example. Yeah, we left behind some forces to keep the order and stuff like that. But our plan was once we've beaten them, we're moving on. We're not going to just say we want to beat Japan, we want to beat Germany, and then just keep moving on to other countries in English and Asia um, uh, or in Europe and Asia. We, we stopped. Like, if you say you want something and you get it, you usually stop. There is no stopping the movement mm. that's that's what i've discovered because mm -hmm. we're now into sort of la la land but they're just there I, to agitate yes i think that sort of lines into the second part of the theory because so normally the movements start at something reasonable and then progress you know get over their skis mm -hmm. but the second one is where the transgression is the point mm -hmm. so that would be like the trans movement didn't start with intersex where it should have. Everyone can agree that people who are intersex, you know, deserve to be called whatever they, you know, whatever they, they live as. But it, it jumped over that. So it'd be yes. like instead of doing gay marriage, starting with gay marriage, they would just start at, you have to bake me a cake. They went straight to sports. Like they started talking, like before doing, they skipped over intersex and jumped straight to, no, Ronda Rousey needs to fight dudes. Well, and it's so, well. It's look. It's this. It's it's this. It's the pronouns or Latinx or whatever. It's like say it. Give us your it's like fuck off. And and everyone goes why 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 don't you just do it? Wear just the mask. Wear the mask. Just, yeah, because it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop. Yeah, just put the mask on. Doesn't make sense. It, just do it. Do it anyway. Just mask up in between bites. Hmm. It's all science. It's perfect science. Yeah. I know what it is. That's why I resist it. I didn't like the lockdowns. It's just for two weeks. It's just for two weeks. Relax. We're just going to close the schools for a little bit. We just got to take some plexiglass and hang it from fishing string. That's all. Because it's science. We're science-based. We believe in science. You know what I mean? I just put the mask on for you know half the flight or whatever. I was always like, I'm not doing this because you assholes never show any sign of slowing down on any of this, which is, which is what I believe about – most movements, and then you start getting into some sublime thing where it's like, what's wrong with drag queen story hour, 16, 19 projects? Like, oh, you guys can't stop. Maybe your dad you, had it right. You can't stop. Just do nothing. My dad's a genius. He's on the sofa right now. Not a care in the goddamn world. <laughs> Not a care in the world. This guy is on his own. Yeah. Uh, all right. Too. Let's do some, uh, take a break, come back and do some news right after this. Blinds galore. Love these guys. Use these guys. They're having their friends and family sale. It starts this week. All custom blinds, shades, and shutters are 50% off. The first big sale of the year. Go to blindsgalore.com today. Get 50% off before it ends. I use these guys. Drew uses these guys. They have ones that you can hook up to your smartphone you plug them in charge it. you don't have to wire it or anything just just charge it battery lasts a long time 100 percent custom blind shades and drapes or shutters blackout cordless motorized smartphone capable they've got it all just take the measurements and uh you can customize it online see exactly what your blind or shade will look like on screen before you buy Everything's hand-built from scratch, created your exact measurements, family-owned and run. These guys have been doing it right for 25-plus years. So get the perfect fit and look. It is guaranteed. It's Blinds Galore, right, Dawson? Get over to BlindsGalore.com to order your free samples today and take 50% off everything during their huge friends and family sale. That's BlindsGalore.com and let them know Adam sent you. Hurry, sale ends March 7th. There's 7 billion people on this planet and we're giving tax breaks to people that have children? How about rewarding the people not overpopulating the planet?
I should be able to cut out the UPC code on my condoms, attach it to my 1040. I want a rebate. You know this wasn't the plan. You know, just 100 years ago, there was just a billion people. God probably took a little nap. Said, oh, everything's fine on Earth. I'm gonna take a little nap. Wakes up, goes, what are they doing down there? Seven billion people, they're sluts. Give me the book. What did I tell them? Be fruitful and multiply. That's a typo. I said be fruitful and pull out. Why would I? Orny Adams is on the Adam Carolla Show. Orny's got uh, some dates, I should say. He's coming up. Houston, Texas, the Riot Comedy Club. That'll be March 31st through uh, April 1st. And then he's off to... Jimmy Kimmel's Comedy Club, April 13th through 16th. I'll be at Jimmy's uh, Club on March 9th. And if you want to find out where I'm going to be, you can go to adamcroll.com. And if you want to find out Orny Adams' dates, you just go ornyadams.com. All right, what do we got? Well, uh, I want to bring up Scott Adams, a different Adams. Mm -hmm. So he's in the news right now. Yeah, so he recently made some comments online um, in response to a report. Uh, The report was, quote, um, it, they were they were asking people it's okay to be white and they they pulled uh, uh, black people white people and said and uh, so Scott read the report and the report found that seventy percent seventy two percent of the respondents agreed it's okay to be white including fifty three percent who are black. All right, so this is a and this was Scott Adams' take on that plus fifty three percent of blacks said it was okay to be white. Yes. All right. No, the opposite. I think. No, it's it's. Fifty-three percent said it's okay to be white. All right. Are they all in one place? Because I want to hang out there. <laughs> if they're scattered about, now I'm now I'm worried. Well, well, Scott had some stuff to say about uh, that. Okay. Too. So if if you know nearly half of all blacks uh, are not okay with white people, according to this poll, not according to me, according to this poll, uh, that's a hate group. That's a hate group, and I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I would say, you know, based on the current way things are going, the best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. Just get the fuck away. Wherever you have to go, just get away. Because there's no fixing this. This can't be fixed. And in response... A lot of places have pulled Dilbert, which is Scott Adams' uh, comic strip. And- <laughs> I just love that. I love when we have to do something. Yeah. You know, we got to yeah. get Dilbert. the cartoon. I remember very clearly, I don't know why, Mr. Bernal came in here a few years ago yep. and explained I was a hero about a story I forgot about because I have low self-esteem. <laughs> <clears throat> when I was in his class in like 1981, my buddy Ray leaned over on that hardwood chair, let a fart go that just was deafening, just <laughs> deafening. And then he yelled at Ray, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Bernal yelled at Ray, you, I, I, God, I've had enough of this, you know, because Ray was always there. Go stand outside, stand outside. And Ray had to go stand out of the classroom in the hall for 15 minutes or something like that. I was laughing so hard <laughs> that, Mr. Bernal needed to do something with me, but right. uh, Ray was already outside, and he couldn't really send me to the principal because I wasn't the one who farted. You he know, didn't want he you two assholes do out there anything. In the, in the and he, hall. he just like he kind of looked at me. He's kind of incredulous, and he was like, "You, Adam, move your seat." You know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Sure. I got up, I walked like seven feet away, and I sat down in an empty <laughs> desk, like, "Okay," and he's like, "Yeah." <laughs> Because he had to do something, so there, but yeah. it wasn't going to accomplish anything. He just had to do something. But wait a minute. Somebody got sent to the principal's office for farting? No, they were well, told sent- to stand in the hall. Just time out. Right. Oh. So Adam laughing, if he was sent to the principal's office, it wouldn't that wouldn't fit the crime. So he yeah. had to think but of something. But these are two involuntary reactions. Or yes. Bodily. Well, Ray. <laughs> no, Ray knew what he was Wait a minute. Did he move his? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, no. I'm sure the taint, taint was up in the air somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure. Did the I fist did this? Pump. Okay, yeah. Yeah. No. He, no, he should he be in the hall. Yeah. <laughs> I found it so hilarious that I couldn't stop myself. But... Um, <laughs> So that's what we got to do. We got to make a move. Take Dilbert down. I don't know. You should thank Ray for that. You're you're thinking, Scott Adams, A, this is the definition of F me money. If you, yeah. everyone thinks, I want F you money. F you money is like you going, I'll, you know, 
you sued me for 150 grand. I don't care if I pay 300 in court fees. I'm taking you to court. That's kind of, that's F you. That's F you money. Yeah. This is F me money. Like I'll never work mm. again, yeah. and I don't care because his net worth is 75 million bucks. So right. this is an F me money move. I mean, like Elon Musk buying Twitter is like an F me money move. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And he had a response to this. Do you have Elon Musk's response yes, he to did. this? Oh, I forgot. That's true, yeah. he did. I didn't. I didn't yeah, so Drew studies Scott. A lot of people with money acting out. Uh. Yes. You, but Drew, it, you, you know Scott Musk went on well. to say is that all media is racist. Towards. And, and, and towards somebody. Yes. Used to be towards black people and then Jewish people, and now it's towards white people. It's, it's always been racist. That's right. And racist. Asians, he said, too. And, and so same with universities and he educational He said the same thing system. happened with elite colleges and high schools in America. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So I know Scott very, very well. I'm, right. And he has been up to – he's been building up to this for a while. I actually called him about a month ago because he started stuff like this. So he was doing some little A-B testing, I think. And I said, Scott, I feel you're priming us for something. He said, of course. I, everything I do is premeditated. Everything. I'm a hypnotist. I'm a persuasion expert. And I just let it go there. I didn't want to know where he was going. But this is, And he's been experimenting with what it takes to get canceled. Because mm-hmm. he, every once in a while, he'll say some stuff like this and go, they didn't cancel me. He he went all the way to the mat this time. And then the other things he's experimenting with is how media creates hoaxes. And he's sort of been making the point of this, which is that he gave a preamble to this, and he gave multiple interviews afterwards contextualizing what this statement meant and what he meant by it and what it was. Of course, none of that gets reported. No. Even you guys don't report that. That's, a, and so, <laughs> that's the clip and, everyone's watching. Yeah, and so there it is. And and I, I, I am worried that he picked the wrong fight. He found I, it. Yeah, he found the third well, rail. Well, he wanted to try to experiment and, with getting and he canceled. Wants, and he did say a couple times, I, I listened very carefully to him when he talks, because because I, I, the reason I got involved with him because I was interested in persuasion and, and I sort of heard some of his little podcast about uh, hypnotism and stuff. You know, I'm interested in human behavior. He's super and, smart, by and the way. Like, and, and at the time, I was upset about Trump. Er, Trump was upsetting me. He was like, he was like, I was one of these people that was having kind of wasn't. The, I wasn't having Trump derangement, but I was like, I was like God, would the guy shut up? And then Scott sort of made sense of what he was doing for me from a persuasion standpoint. And then, all right, at least it makes sense from somebody's perspective. But in any event, more recently, he's also said things like, "I'm searching for freedom." I want to be. I want to be. I want total freedom, where I can say anything I want. And this seemed like sort of the start of that. What was yeah. his whole thing with identifying as black? For years, he's been saying he's been saying, "I'm black, and I'm I'm so I'm so on board with the black community. I, I'm gonna, and you can identify as whatever you want today." He said so. I'm black. That's mm-hmm. it. I'm I'm identifying as black and. He gave all his reasons for it. He did that for years. How That's do we? How on. do you know if this is a like a form of artistic expression? If it's a guy who's gone delusional? If it's a guy who's really so evolved and smart that he's b- doing this to open our eyes? These to are all the points he wants you to think. Yeah, That's the kind of th- thoughts he wants you to what have. What do you think? I don't know where he's going. <laughs> I feel like I'm, I'm very frightened <laughs> that he picked the wrong topic because there's. I, I say this all the time, and you give me shit for it all the time, Adam, but there's things that as a white person you do not appreciate, and you have to pay very careful attention to that. And I don't think he appreciates what he doesn't appreciate. And, and what think, are those things? Because You know, being Eurocentric, being raised in a certain environment, and I, I, I read Frederick Douglass to help me understand what I don't understand. I think and, we all do. No, I, I, mean, I recommend it to everybody. So the words are <laughs> that's spectacular. That's the dad from My Three Sons? <laughs> <laughs> no, he's dad on Flipper. No, that's Fred. Oh, yes. no, yeah. It was a dad and on Flipper. Or Gentle Ben. Yeah, that guy. Or no, it was... Uh, uh, Enemy, he had me as Fred McMurray. Fred oh, Fred right. McMurray, yeah. I read that guy. Yeah. <laughs> he did audition he for Leave it to too. Beaver, didn't he? Fred, he was in Flubber. <laughs> he was in Flubber. Oh. That's true. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do another another story. All right. Well, it, it's scary that, to, to not to defend Scott, but uh, that high a percentage of black people saying it's not okay to be white, I that's think not that's, a great- I think uh, that's why he picked his moment with Yeah, that. that's not a great look. Also, yeah. How, is this a real study? Was this in that- It was what, a, was it it was, it was a Rasmussen poll- and the question was, I believe, Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, is it okay to be white? Right. Which is a very vague, bizarre question. It's almost people like the Anti-Defamation League says that, that the question alone is racist. Right. Mm. That's right. 
Yeah, it's a trigger. And so the whole thing is a fucking mess as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. I'd rather, I, I hope, I just once got to make it through in one piece, you know, good for him. I know he's not a racist person, but I always worry when people, you know, I know how careful I have to. I won't I'll, be, so. I'll give him, I'll give him your regards at the next rally see him <laughs> on Saturday. with your torch. <laughs> we don't. It's a daytime rally. It's a, it's a matinee. It's a rally matinee. Oh, but I'll goodness. see him there. But yeah. they still like I'll the torches. A boy. If, if I know him, somehow we'll we will all learn something from this. Yeah, he's a provocateur. Yeah, he's conducting an experiment yes, on all of that's us. That's exactly right. Yeah, and, we'll be surprised those. We'll and it's not. It's not. Horribly unlike when Dave Damashek would show up to the Super Bowl game and show up to the press conference and say to the opposing coaches, "Is this a must-win game?" <laughs> Everyone, just as much outrage. Everyone just dives in and goes, "That's nuts! Is he nuts? Yeah, he's he's trolling you guys yeah. to see how you react." All right. Yeah. All right. Um. So Vanderbilt University's Peabody School in Tennessee, so they're apologizing to their students because. Um, they sent out an email about a mass shooting um, at another university, trying to comfort the students, letting them know that uh, you know we're thinking of you and, and we got to take care of each other, particularly in the context of creating exclusive, inclusive environments. And then at the end, they re- it read, by the way, this letter was written by AI. Oh my god! <laughs> like wait, we used AI to write this. Wow. So of course, once the once the students read that part, they're like, this isn't personal at all, and they they are now fading outrage as well. Yeah, it was a couple of female professors are trying to, you know, get a little, little glory being so sensitive, but being basically Jim Carroll esque in their work ethic, like farming it out to a computer. I mean, it's a good letter. It actually like, talks AI, about AI inclusiveness and coming together. AI is going to be a shit show because AI is already super woke, <laughs> and we're not going to get any good information out of AI because. We can't because there are, it's already super woke because whoever programs AI is super woke. Yeah, uh, Mike Chaffee actually went to chat GPT and said, hey, rant as if Adam Kroll is ranting about red turn arrows. And then we read it and Lynch went, my job is safe because they didn't use the word pussy once. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Very uh, – and, and so what AI is going to be, it, it'll be like sort of like like – PolitiFact or something, like fact checkers. Like you go, oh, uh, I think COVID came from a lab in Wuhan. And they go, yeah, no, let me check. Uh, PolitiFact fact checker says you're wrong. Right. Oh, okay. So you guys have somebody checking facts. Which who, did happen. <laughs> who agrees with you <laughs> yeah. on, on everything. Yeah. So this is going to be like PolitiFact. Like, like, I don't think masks are fact. Well, PolitiFact says they are. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, this is, this is nice that you've hired – an entity to make you right who calls themselves like PolitiFact, like Southern Poverty Law Center has called, labeled this a, a Dennis Prager a, a, a hater. You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, because they're super progressive, bought and sold. You're going to the, then then people cite them. So now we're going to get in arguments and people are going, no, no, AI said, AI said that the, the vax was good for you. And now we're fucked again. Thank you. Well uh, by the way, the same people who are running PolitiFact and AI are accusing everyone on the other side of misinformation, by the way. Why don't we ask AI what it thinks of AI? Oh, someone must yeah, have mm-hmm. already. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Chris is on that. <laughs> well, speaking of, of the Wuhan lab, so new intelligence has prompted the energy department to conclude that an accidental laboratory leak in China most likely caused the coronavirus pandemic. What? No way. I know. Way. I you're, you're a conspiracy we're all, we're all theorist. We're all I you, bet there's a... How oh. you can, for reading that, you're a conspiracy theorist. Oh, Ben, look up. I think Politico or PolitiFact or whatever did a fact check. They did. On yeah, that. a few years ago. Well, I mean... Uh, yeah, remember years ago, he even true. floated the idea. John Stewart went on Colbert and floated the idea. He was ridiculed. People, um, if you posted anything like that on Facebook, you were banned. Twitter, you were banned. Like two you things I love. One, the FBI had already determined this in 2021, but that was that. Look it up. That was carefully hidden. So the FBI had concluded, not with a low probability, high, moderate to high probability, that it was a leak. FBI. Then. Uh, shit, what was the other thing I was going to talk about? God damn it. Mm, long haulers. Uh, it is yeah. long haulers. Well, it, Fauci also, remember, he he would say no gain of function. Fauci's reason. going next, Drew. I got some bad news for you. Do you got something specific? What did I, just, what have I been telling you for two years? He's trending right now as we're speaking. Right yeah. now. Oh, what, yeah, because everyone's... What have I been telling you? 
that he was going that he was adulterated. Yes, he's yeah. corrupted. Corrupted, and corrupted. he will be going down too. Yep. Yep. Well, That's your he's, hero. he said something that I, in retrospect, now like really troubles me. You know, one of the one of the most sort of standout, extraordinary slogans from human history about totalitarian states is l'état c'est moi the state is me mm-hmm. he said science is me yes you it's, can't it's question a, it's a very science. similar kind of a thing it's you like can't question Whoa. him you're questioning science that's so crazy he's such a sanctimonious douche and all the fucking idiots in hollywood just fucking bought their candles and worshiped at his altar you guys all owe me a fucking apology. It's coming. Me, I was too. Not their apology. I, I, hey. Yes, Drew's already apologized. Yeah. Fauci's, they're not done with Fauci. Who, who, who in the uh, dismantling of his... There, once a couple of people who give a shit get him in front of Congress and start asking some questions, there's going to be some issues. What was his motive? Well, uh, in your could opinion. have been, it, it, it was either, well, first off, he was giving a lot of money to the... To the um, lab. Eco health care. Eco health care through eco health care. So he didn't, he was, and, and he was funding gain of function essentially, but calling it something else essentially, but it was ostensibly gain of function. So there's basically him tied to giving money to this lab who was doing this kind of experimenting that we all sort of agreed was a bad thing. And so he had to get it out of the lab and onto the wet market onto the farmer's market with the persimmons oh, because and, and if it got way, tied to the lab, then it would go back to him. That was the other point I wanted to make that I think was ho- so hysterical, was that it was racist to say it came from China, oh, from yes. a Chinese lab, but not racist to say Chinese people are gross and they eat animals, a wet lab, oh, wet, right. wet market, oh, and they bat and they pangolin it. It caused the, an infection because they're so gross. Yes. That's not racist. Listen, <laughs> if, if you had two fucking brain cells to rub together... The Wuhan lab should have been filed right under the masking up in between bison on an airplane. Are you nuts? There's a fucking lab in China that works on viruses. Of course, that's where it came from. Do you not, know the- not viruses. Those sorts of coronaviruses in that way, yes. which showed up on the bile of the uh, The only good stuff. part of this chapter in our history <laughs> is people that put together long montages of Chuck Todd and all the other talking heads on NB, MSNBC and CNN wagging their finger at everyone. Joy Reid, this is the debunk theory. It's the yep. greatest. That's my greatest joy. <laughs> I'd much rather watch that than talk to my kids. I just want to watch these sanctimonious pricks from up high wagging their fucking fingers at uh, everyone. Uh, by the way, put together a montage about the vax being effective, the mask being effective, emanate where 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 COVID emanated from. You, you could do an entire. Super 70s montage <laughs> hit of Joy Reid and Chuck Todd just being wrong the entire time. Wolf Blitzer would be in there. They're all just fucking wrong. And I love that people are whacking together the extended dance version of them being wrong. Now, here's the deal. Why did you people listen to them? And why do you continue to listen to them when the next thing comes down the pike? Because it's always just the next thing. And you right. guys listen. And they go, well, who do you, who I listen to? Listen to everyone who got thrown off of Twitter. The first people to go to is why are you guys so insecure about your theme and your narrative that you have to take physicians from Stanford and Harvard and, and deplatform them? Why, why are you so insecure about this? First people you listen to now are the people who get thrown off. I'm not talking about, you know, hillbillies who are talking about, <clears throat> you know, lasers and Jews like Marjorie Taylor Greene. I'm saying board qualified physicians who've been in good standing with decades of history not not just good standing guys like Bhattacharya and McCullough these are decorated professors yes with yes. years of recurrent awards for yes. esteem as a professor and teacher yes and hundreds of publications and then we got to get Fauci emails going these guys need to be shut down hard correct. Fast. where is somebody supposed to get the correct information from for somebody like me that believes in the CDC question. what it's a great yeah. question uh, it, it's where, where do I listen I for instance rely on the medical literature I read medical literature like crazy and I it has been adulterated a bit. It, it's hard to figure out what's going on. You, you definitely can't go to bureaucracies. You definitely can't go to single sources. But it's it's there's going to be a consensus that emerges. 
It's just we're not there yet. I, why can't why can't uh, I'm somebody who would look at Dr. Fauci and go, "This is a guy who's dedicated his entire life." I was with him too all the way. And I, now Adam, you're not. Adam knows. I defended him yeah. like till like you called him six, his, your north star. Yeah, till so like eight months you? ago. He he cl- started saying crazy things and wasn't answering questions honestly and things that I knew not to be true. He was sort of alleging they were, and I was like, "Well, this is weird." And then they were just way over their skis with the masks and the mandates and all this stuff. And I thought, "Well, this isn't this is not science based. This but is something my else. my view on the masks was let's wear them, and if in ten years we find out it was crazy and it did nothing, no. it, at worst we just wore masks we, for we, a little we while. We knew it eighteen months ago. The first study was out of Denmark 18 months ago. There was a second study four months later out of Bangladesh. And now we have a meta-analysis through Cochrane that shows clearly, categorically, we've known all along the surgical cloth masks do not work. That we've just known that. But how can it not work when... Because these are aerosolized viruses. They're not spit. They're aerosolized. And so if you have anything here where air emerges, Mm -hmm. the virus goes out and 20 feet away. By the way, six feet, invented. Completely invented out of whole cloth. There is no science. There was a group of, doc- not even doctors, bureaucrats in a room in Washington, I've spoken to some of them, mm-hmm. who were trying to decide between three feet and 60 feet. And they just arbitrarily picked six feet because they figured they'd get people but to do that. But the mask has to stop something, right? It no, it to- sends it out the side and around the nose. Listen, even with when- So you're saying 100% is still getting out- the mass may be worse, it. may be worse because it has a little bit of force as it comes out. Now, with the N95, if you have a seal or a respirator, you're in good shape in terms of protecting yourself, not you can't protect somebody else. But why am I to believe you over uh, a Dr. Fauci or somebody like Fauci that? Fauci now that- admits it. Now he, and by the way, he started with masks don't work and then he flipped. I don't know why he flipped. Because, uh, and back then, we, we so he's thought. trying to get the kids crate trained. That's what well, this that's what is you, all you Do you think that this is a global, let's control the people? Is that where you think this is all? Uh, I do to the extent, I mean, I think it's an element of, you know, you're on a highway, you're in a sports car, and all of a sudden the cops go, there's no speed limit here. And you go, well, I'm going to stretch my legs. Like, I'm going to see what this Corvette can do, you know? So guys like Newsom just went, let's see what I can do here. And th- that's... And I, I don't believe – so I don't believe they went, I want to hurt people. No, they just no. go, I want to rule people, and now I get a chance to I, rule I, that. I'm not sure it's that clear cut. I, I talked to governors – Well, well I'm beca- oh, sorry. It became very politicized, and yeah, we, they weird. had to do the opposite of anyone – any Republican that said open the schools, they'd say close the schools. And if Trump said this, they'd say that, and they didn't even know what they were doing. They were just but, but, reacting to be the opposite to, to of DeSantis. Point, what I talked to governors who were like – were like mortified by the idea that they were going to tell their populace what to do. It's like, I I didn't become governor to rule. That's not my job. I'll give people the information and then they decide what to do. Versus governors who went, oh, I'm I'm not comfortable. I'm only, not only am I comfortable, this is, this is awesome. I want to, we're going to do this and keep it going and I'm going to lead everybody out of this. That's, that's a terrible impulse for people. And so it was, and then it was just, it just this big divide between people who didn't feel that that was their job in a, you know, free republic versus those that thought it was a good idea. To we, I, but we weren't even arguing over COVID 10 minutes into it. It was just, you know, DeSantis and Trump and the right wingers, they want to keep the schools open and they don't want to close the businesses. And then Gavin Newsom and Gretchen Whitmer and whoever go, well, then fuck that. We're closing everything. And that's where we got to. I happen to rather be on the side of the stay open people. I don't even know why that would make you a Republican or a Democrat. I just would like to use the beach when there's zero harm in (laughs) using the motherfucking beach because it's outdoors. And we knew that from the beginning. And we knew it from the beginning. But I happen to live in a state where they close the beaches. Then you go, well, well, it's because you don't you don't you don't like Gavin Newsom. Yeah. Guess why? I don't like him. And then he's closing my kids' schools in the beaches. That's why I don't like it. And then it. the the problems of you know, diseases of despair and depression, and anxiety and addiction is now just and right. so that's, predictable. So that's predictable. what I believe. And that we have been too. mentally damaged. Oh yeah. Yes. I find that oh, yeah. I'm foggier than I've ever been. I find I'm uh, more agoraphobic. Mm. I find I don't trust people. Like I yeah. find. My recall, I, I, I do, and I think that we, study we, is going to come out. And do, do I ever recover from this? I or? think you do, but we, we need – I've noticed there's a group of people that are really, myself included, like craving social contact. It's kind of an odd – I don't know quite how to characterize it yet, but people are like 
like I go for every opportunity I had to shake somebody's hand. Handshaking was never a problem. It should never have been an issue. The thing is not transmitted on body fluids. Well, you got to wash your hands isn't. for 35 minutes. Yeah, I know. Happy it's, birthday twice. Yeah, that's it's, right. It's, 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 it's uh. respiratory aerosols, not spit, not droplet, not body fluid, aerosol out of deep lung tissue. And, you know, we made ourselves crazy worrying about other people. Imagine you're nine years old learning that other people are the source of terror right. and, and horror and, and death and are going to kill grandmother. Ugh, it's just such an awful thing. And it was awful from the beginning. It was obvious it was awful. And it was obvious that they took no risk reward into consideration. Right. They did not consider what the consequences would be. They just right. did it. And the crazy thing is now we have all the emails that show where did this come from? This idea of lockdown that had never been contemplated in human history from the Chinese Communist Party. Fauci sent his little team over to China. Those scientists said, oh, yeah, we got it. We've done it. We've taken care of it. It's a lockdown. It's over in Wuhan. And they brought it home, told Italy to do the same. And that was what the whole world and we followed strangely. From there. So you yeah. believe yeah. the lockdown we was didn't a mistake. Follow. You <laughs> all follow. It's a huge <laughs> mistake. China finally this. let it go. They're not doing it anymore. It's a huge mistake. Now, I, I have no problem with a few months of lockdown because it was confusing time and right. I supported it. I was like, okay, it's good. people are confused. They're preparing for the worst. I think it's a terrible idea, but all right, well, let's see. Let's see. And then it, it was, evidence was very clear. It wasn't doing anything and then yeah. they kept it anyway. Yeah. In the efficacy of the vaccine? Mm, it gets, it, so, it, it, look, I uh, I won't launch into it, but I will say follow the trajectory of anything. Just follow the trajectory. It's like start well, first off. Remember, you get it, and you never have to think about COVID again because you can't get COVID, once you and you cannot vaccine. spread COVID yeah. once once you get one shot or two shots, and then uh, becomes you can get it, but it's not as bad. I, I want to see. I'm waiting for that study too because I'm not so sure about that one. Well, but then you you can get it, but you can't spread it. Then you can get it, and you can spread it. Then uh, you get the two shots, and you're good. Except for now, you have to be boosted. Uh, natural immunity. Fauci didn't know about natural immunity all the years he's been studying the subject. Didn't know quite what to make of natural immunity. Immunity. 82 years old, been doing this for 60 years. Had no eh, had to wait. We're gonna see. We'll see the durability. The durability of natural immunity versus the durability of an injection that's not durable. But they, I, they didn't know that at the time, to be fair. To they him. were getting the it, idea. It, it, it's, it, it'll end up being bad for you. You'll end up wishing you didn't well, get The problem with this that's, is that's if we at. can't trust Fauci, then why do I go to the doctor and get a physical? Well, why do I trust problem. the doctor? When, tomorrow I, I have to go to my orthopedic surgeon. Why do I listen to him? I know. Why? It's you a know, problem. Honestly. No. Yeah, I agree. Honestly, you have I to want turn to believe within. So I think people <laughs> want to believe uh, Fauci. Yes, they want to believe the CDC. I went to... Emory, where the right, CDC but, is. But listen, you've so, got to be able to read between the lines. But you have to is, understand, when Fauci is, when he's being questioned yeah. by Jim Jordan, and they're going, any gatherings of any kind? He goes, no gatherings of any, no baseball, no church, no nothing, no games, no nothing. No. What about Black Lives Matter? What about those rallies? But listen, but listen and you know to what this. his answer is? Can I, I can't judge. All right, now keep an eye on him. But you, got, you don't need to listen. When Michelle Walensky, head of the CDC, gets up there and starts talking about not letting her teenage son go to sleepaway camp or she's worried as a mom or whatever, keep your eye on her. These are tells. These are tells that these people have been corrupted. You have one side saying, don't trust the scientists, don't trust Fauci. And then you've got the other side saying, defund the police. No, so, but, but there's the whole thing. Like, don't fund, you know, don't trust the scientists. No, no. They said don't trust the scientists who anoint themselves experts and make policy. Jay Bhattacharya and all those guys, they're all scientists, too. Go listen to some other scientists. That's what they're saying. This, it's, it's so convenient because they go, oh, oh you don't want to listen to what Shel Walensky, the CDC, says and Fauci says, so you don't trust science. It's like, no, I think they've been corrupted. And there's a bunch of other scientists who I will listen to. So that's the so problem. That's what it came some down things, to. Things as I understand. So we rushed the vaccine because it was an emergency. We took extraordinary risk to get that vaccine out. I think that was a good thing. I think back, particularly then, we had Alpha and Delta, and things were pretty nasty with the, that virus. We needed to do something extreme. We did it, and I think it may have given us some time as the thing for the grace of God, tra transformed into Omicron, which is a much less serious thing. So I do think during that early day, it was ex exceedingly good. I really do think it was a good thing. 
it caused problems. It was a much higher risk than we would ever tolerate under normal circumstances, mm -hmm. but I think it was the right thing to do. The confusing thing now is continuing to demand it in the face of a very mild illness that it particularly doesn't affect young people where there are still questions about the vaccine. That, that's it. And the other thing on the CDC and Fauci and stuff, even they are starting to say now, well, we didn't do a good job on our messaging. And I think that is exactly the point. Their messaging was designed for like 1970, really 1980, where you had three or four networks and you had to repeat the same thing over and over again. And it didn't matter all the nuances and stuff. You just picked your thing and you stuck with it. Now that looks like lying because everyone has access to so much internet information that that's just not the way to approach things at all. And both Walensky and Fauci got stuck in that. And I was part of Fauci's squad team in the 80s when we were using fear, which he used in this pandemic, to frighten people about HIV and AIDS. Right. He kept telling us, use, you know, you got to convince them that two million people are going to die and anybody can get this illness. And if you, if you have sex with somebody, you're having sex with everybody they ever had sex with. Remember all that stuff? Yeah. I adopted it wholeheartedly. I was part of that. I used fear actively. And we thought we did the right thing. Those were the seeds of what we saw here now, where those same techniques didn't work. And Deborah Birx was another sort of... Um, a uh, uh, veteran of the AIDS pandemic and used the, that old playbook and it was not the right playbook for this at all, at all. And they need to sort of say that. Instead, Burks is feeling like a hero. So whenever yeah. he, the bottom line, if you have evangelical <laughs> physicians on anything, it's how we got the opioid crisis. Evangelical physicians going, nobody's ever going to feel pain again in America. Pain is a fit vital sign. Pain control is what the patient says it is. There were about three or four doctors that foisted the whole fucking thing. Same thing happened with COVID. All right. Well, we just ruined Orny's world. <laughs> so you'll never trust anything uh, ever said again. Uh, let me give some uh, plugs out. You can go to ornyadams.com and you can find out all his live dates. You can go to adamcroll.com and find out all my live dates. And you can check out Dr. Drew. Tweet him at Dr. Drew. Instagram, Dr. Drew Pinsky. Website, drdrew.com. And you can listen to him and I do our show and his podcast and After Dark and all that. So, until next time, Santa Adam Kroll for Orny Adams and Dr. Drew and Chris Max Bata saying, Mahalo. <laughs> 